one. I will open tonight's meeting of the Lunenburg Select Board, Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. I would ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, in accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page and will be uploaded to the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours at the, after the conclusion of the meeting. If you would like to join tonight's meeting and have a computer, smartphone, or tablet, uh, you can use the Zoom application. Tonight's webinar ID is 909-174-0347. And this is for remote participation in the public comment at the beginning and end of the meeting only. If you do not have a smart device and wish to participate in public comment by phone, you can do so by calling 888-475-4499 and once again, the webinar ID is 909-174-0347. The posted agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at this meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Do I have any public comment this evening from the board? No comment. None. Nope. No. Not any public comment from the public. <coughs> Seeing none. Any announcements, Madam Town Manager? None. I have five announcements. They all have to do with this weekend and next weekend. So this Saturday uh, is Homecoming Saturday. So there will be the Homecoming Parade right here in the center of town. Uh, approximately 12 noon, followed after the parade and the floats by the football game, which will be approximately 2 p.m. Right after the parade, Boys and Girls Club is having two events. In the afternoon, they are celebrating their 16th anniversary with a Sweet 16 birthday party. That is at the Boys and Girls Club property at uh, right here on the corner of Main Street. And... That starts at 12.30, so 12.30 p.m. till uh, I think about 2 or 2.30. And that evening at the Boys and Girls Club, they have their annual Shrieks and Creeks Haunted House, and that runs from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. There will be lots of events in the Haunted House, and I think there will be refreshments and some food served as well. For Halloween next Saturday, just be aware that the Lunenburg Parks and Recreation is having their trunk or treat on Saturday October 30th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lunenburg High School upper parking lot. I believe you have to register. Is that true? Yes, you have to register online. So look on their, their site on the Lunenburg uh, webpage. And then just one more reminder that on Sunday, Halloween itself, October 31st, the trick-or-treat hours in town are from 6 to 8 p.m. Appointment 705 on the nose, meeting with the DPW director regarding the share of the road signage and acceptance of a donation of a picnic table at Marshall Pond or Marshall Park? Uh, Marshall Pond, they actually plan okay. on, on placing okay. it. I just want to make sure that what I had was accurate. Yep, so the Parks Commission has a generous donation of a picnic table that they're asking you to accept for, as a town, <coughs> gift to the town. Any questions? No. I would entertain a motion regarding the request to accept the donation of the picnic table. I I'm move to accept the donation of a picnic table at Marshall Pond. Second. Well, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes unanimously. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm also here for another donation, um, and with me tonight is Mr. Pete Cowley, um, a resident who is uh, an avid cyclist in town, 
and is looking to donate a number of share the road signs to the DPW for us to install um, various locations around town, um, basically to call awareness to the fact that uh, vehicles share the road with cyclists and, and pedestrians as well. But in this case, they're share the road signs. They feature a bicycle or a bicycle and pedestrians. Um, I know Mr. Cali would just like to explain why he's making this gift to the town. And so I'm actually gonna ask him to come on up and say a couple words. Hi, I'm Peter Cowley, uh, Peninsula Drive, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, during my, sure, that's an example of the uh, signs that we're proposing. Um, I put on about 1,500 to 2,000 miles of uh, biking per year and uh, I've also uh, toured in various countries and uh, including across our own country, which was a great experience. But it's given me the opportunity to see a, a, a lot of different uh, traffic situations and uh, ways of handling uh, local multi-use uh, traffic. Um, first of all, Lunenburg has great biking roads. Um, it, it's a combination of they're, they're scenic, uh, they're relatively wide, they're relatively light traffic, and uh, nice surfaces. And you know, for that, I'd like to give credit to the DPW. They've got, uh, they do a great job of taking care of them. Um, the, the, uh, my experience is that most, most drivers in our area, not just Lunenburg, are uh, very considerate. Uh, uh, give people plenty of room. Um, you know, as in anywhere, there's always a few that are going to go a little faster than they ought to be, uh, cut it a little bit closer to us on the roads. And, uh, you know, I feel it would be useful to have some reminders for, uh, uh, you know, just we're required to uh, share the road. It's, it's uh, by law. And, uh, so Mr. Oliva has been uh, very receptive and enthusiastic for uh, a, a program to um, help put some reminders up um, in, in the form of uh, signs uh, of share the road that I, th I guess you've seen now as well as the uh, stencils on the roads that you see in some of our neighboring communities. And uh, my objective is also to uh, remind bikers that uh, they, they need to uh, show the same courtesy and follow the rules that, uh, and uh, get, get the same respect that uh, we would hope to receive from uh, motor vehicles. So, uh, you know, I'd like to make this small donation uh, for the town to help keep everybody safer. It's sort of a little way of uh, paying back for uh, uh, what I've uh, experienced. So. Um, I, uh, Rob and I have talked about uh, uh, locations. I've got a uh, generated a prioritized list of uh, places where uh, the most heavily traveled roads that could use both just biking signs as well as biking and plus pedestrian signs. Um, and uh, I view it as an ongoing program, uh, hopefully starting next spring. So what are uh, those locations, if I may ask, like where are some of the locations that you're looking at? Oh, let's see. That was, um, that was a page oh, I didn't see the list. Uh, on sorry. the bottom here. Um, there are, let's see, well, North, Northfield Road would be a priority. Um, the, the Reservoir Road and uh, Arbor Street Corridor is, uh, is pretty heavily used by uh, both pedestrians and uh, bikes. Uh, there's, there's also, there, there tend to be road routes that go through town that, um, that also could use them. Uh, let's see, one that comes to mind is Malpas. It's a, it's a beautiful road. It's got some windy curves on it. So I, I'd, I'd like to just remind people that, uh, you know, okay, there could be others on the road besides them having fun on a nice uh, curvy road. Um, let's see, some of the others. Uh, uh, it, it, it's on there, uh, Townsend Harbor, um, you know, parts of Route 2A, I don't know how much we can actually do with that, 
Lemonster Road, Hi Highland Road is a, uh, another one. Uh, another one over at uh, Sunset in the Robs Hill area. Uh, Goodrich is a real nice road as well. Cool. And uh, Good Goodrich in particular um, has, um, ha has some curves on it that um, uh, I think people could use a reminder. Would these be put on existing poles or these would be on their own? No, we would do new, new poles. So, you know, the DPW would, would provide the hardware and the, the labor to put the signs up. Um, I think um, Mr. Kelly's guidance is great in terms of the experience of biking. And, and I asked him to come up with some locations when we first started talking about this. So uh, he's been a, a pretty good resource on this, um, far more knowledgeable than I would be on the matter. So. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about you know getting them out there, and I, I know people do bike, um, so I, I think it's great to kind of call attention to the fact that we have bikes on the road, and um, when we do, uh, we have a, a local paint contractor, striping contractor. I know he's done crosswalks and stuff in the past. Um, I would plan on using someone like him to um, paint the, the bike stencils in some locations. Um, so it's you know, overall, I think it's it's a win for the town. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's a great idea, and I think anything that brings awareness to the fact that there are other people other than motor vehicles on the road is a good idea. And I'm, I'm, I'm just add, I'm not looking to plaster uh, every, every road with uh, uh, signs, but uh, you know to use it judicious, judiciously, so you know people actually do pay attention to them instead of just seeing, oh, there's another one. Mm. Well, according to this, you have 19 signs. According to this list, is that? Accurate. Uh, yes, that's that's our. Uh, I would think that would be hardly plastering. So. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Chair. Mr. Marino. Um, Pete and I have had conversations in the past uh, about this subject, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, I wasn't able to help him at the time. And I guess this leads me to my question: Did you already purchase the signs, or? No. No, no. I, I mean, no, what I, kind of money is it going to cost you to? Uh, to I'm looking uh, at about fifteen hundred. Yeah. Is there any? You don't have any money in your budget to cover some of that, or? I, I, he's this man has been very passionate about this, and I tried to help him <laughs> in the past, <laughs> and unfortunately, we just didn't have the money at the time. It, it's okay. I, I mean, Mr. Kelly has come to me with this, and, and we've discussed it at length. Um, I, the town is contributing in terms of the hardware and the labor to install them, which mm -hmm. I, I think is reasonable. Um, I, I do. I agree. It's a generous gift, and mm -hmm. um, I know Mr. Kelly must be committed, uh, con considering the amount. Yeah. Well. I may end up taking some donations from some of my biking friends. Um, it, I, I feel it's just a way of, um, you know, paying back. I've spent a lot of hours on roads in town and uh, yeah. have uh, enjoyed it. It's, it's been a nice place to live, nice place to raise my children. And um, this is, you know, one little contribution I can make. Well, I, I, for one, really appreciate it. i sorry that <laughs> you know, we're at this point where you're paying for that. We sh we should have did that, but not not, not at all. No, uh, that's that's okay. Yeah. But you know, we're getting the ball rolling, and I, I think that's that's the important part here. Yeah. Well, you know, I think the least the town should do for you. Um, this is how optimistic I am. Is to buy you an updated uh, sweatshirt in about three weeks. <laughs> well, this this actually was my dad's. He was born in 1916. Mm -hmm. He liked to uh, bring attention to the fact that he was alive for the 1918 World Series win as well as the 2004. That's that's, <laughs> too, that's amazing. <laughs> Not too many people could make that claim. No. So. No. You know, uh, a after he passed away, I, uh, there's no way I could, I could pass this up. And uh, sorry for the appearance, but I was wearing this when they beat the Yankees, and I can't wash it until... <laughs> That's fine with me. I'm sure your dad really partied hard after that 1918 win at the <laughs> <laughs> I have um, a couple questions. So first, I think this is a really great idea. 
Um, but as far as the problem that we're trying to address, um, how many bicycle vehicle related incidents, accidents, uh, do you know, have there been in town in the last year, two years, three years? I don't know of any, thankfully. Okay. There has been a couple, but it's not a serious problem. It's the NAMIS is that we, we get a lot of... Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at prevention and, uh, more than anything. I, I certainly haven't heard of any uh, serious uh, incidents, you know, w with a, a motor vehicle. Okay. And of the locations, there's 19, just so I'm reading this correctly, there's 19 locations for signage. Um, well, let me re there's you, as you, we look at this, can you help me read what I'm reading? Look at, help me translate what I'm reading. It says priority one, seven, priority two, 32, priority three, seven. Um, and then there's, uh, so, and then there, it's a note of about 62 stencils. So how many signs exactly are you looking to install and how many stencils, 62 stencils? Well, one, one stencil because it, it's reusable. It's a heavy duty uh, poly. I understand, I mean, I mean, how many places on the road would be painted with the stenciling? Six? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking t typically on some of these roads, uh, typically uh, just before some, some of the curves coming from both directions. Okay, I, I guess I'm asking how many, lo how many places will there be this stencil on the, on the road in town? Maybe I should answer this. Sure. Um, at this point, we don't have a final. We don't have a final plan on all the locations. Um, some locations may be we go out and look and decide there may be multiple, you know, stencil marks um, at a location. If if he's got 62 there now, I mean that could be a goal. And moving forward, I, d I don't think I'll get to 62 kind mm -hmm. of next spring or no. next summer. So it'll be you know phased in over a period of time. Um, but we may come up with more locations. Um, we may find that it's wildly popular and people love it and it's a great idea and we do more. Um, but that's just a kind of a, a quick take to start. Um, granted, we're not going to do it all at once. Yeah. The, the signs for the most part will get up as, as quickly as we can, um, but I think the stencils will take a little bit longer. Okay. I'm in support of the concept. I, I, I would like to know where they're going to be at uh, around the town, I mean, or, or you know, the quantity of signage, the quantity of stenciling, and I think it's going to be helpful to raise awareness about you know. The, the, I understand everything you're saying. I, I'm just trying to understand, you know, what the, how this is going to transform the look of roadways and across town, and if we're addressing if this is solving a problem. It for, if I can use an example, uh, uh, my thought on, say, Reservoir Road mm -hmm. would be uh, one sign uh, pr pretty much at either end, you know, one in each direction, and then one, possibly two stencils near uh, the curves uh, in, in the road, sort of, you know, the ones somewhat in the middle. Okay. We can, I mean, we can certainly over the winter before we start, um, I can come up with a plan and show the locations and through town manager get that to you. Great. That's fine. I will do that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I haven't specified any locations. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm with, with Rob, fully yeah, planning on working with Mr. Cowley on that. Um, so we'll bring that to you. Okay. If I may, what is your concern about either of those? about the signs or the stencils. I'm, I'm not understanding your concern. I don't know if it's a concern. Con I mean, I'm not. I think that my question is, where are they going to be at? I mean, I think w the question before us is to approve this, but there's no specific plan in front of us. So we're approving a concept. And so I'm asking for specifications of that concept. In, again, I, I will gladly draft up a plan and, and provide that. Yep. It, it, we're, we're actually, you know, we haven't purchased the signs yet. Uh, I wanted to get through this process and get it approved, get signs uh, uh, purchased and delivered. Uh, I don't know how long, I don't know what the del delivery time is on these uh, yet either. So, uh, and then I, I was going to work with Mr. Oliva to uh, actually specify locations. Okay. Yeah, that, 
I'm, I'm in favor. I don't want to sound like I'm skeptical. You know, I, working in Cambridge, I think they put these about every 15 feet. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Yeah, I, 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 I actually agree that some, some places seem to overdo it. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, that's why I use the term judiciously, judiciously placed. Yeah. Um, that, um, you know, I... I, I, I certainly, I wouldn't want to see them, you know, every, uh, every half mile, for example. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, I, I think some of the ones in uh, some of the areas that, um, um, you know, people could just use some reminders um, and, and where the uh, visibility might be, uh, uh, might be an issue. I mean, if you, if you see some of the bikers going through town and they're uh, wearing those funny-looking outfits that with the uh, ugly colors, I mean, the main the main uh, objective there is just to be visible. And that's why so many people are using uh, blinker blinking lights uh, yeah. on their bikes now too. So again, there's uh, you know just something to you know maybe. As I'm driving along, for example, I see uh, something in the road. Um, I just sort of say, "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, my, maybe maybe it'll make a difference." Hey, the signs about turtles, I think, have made me more mindful. So, any other questions or comments? Yeah, I just wanted to say, it seems to me like you're completely conscious of of the idea of not overdoing it. Uh, there's a concept in tort law called warnings pollution. When you provide so many warnings, there are no warnings at all. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yes. So, uh, you know, you said exactly. People will say, oh, there's another one. They won't. You're conscious of the issue. So it seems like it will be totally judicious to me. Anybody else? I would entertain a motion regarding the acceptance of the <coughs> share of the road signage as presented. A motion to accept. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Thank you very much, and thank you much for thank your you. for a very generous donation. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you thank all you. for your attention. Thanks for uh, some thank good you. questions. All right. Go Sox. Thank Thanks. you. Go Sox. <laughs> okay. Okay. Talk slowly, I can introduce the next thing and be on time for 725. So the next up we have interviews regarding the landscape design services for 30 School Street, also known as the old primary property. And we had three app three people submit applications or submissions for the RFP that we will be interviewing. And first up is Wright Ostermeyer Landscape Architects, uh, officially known as WOLA, is that it? Yes. Okay, please. Uh, you're you going to stand at the podium and stand present, the podium. because that's the microphone. Okay, perfect. So. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Is she the O in Wola? That's All right. <laughs> See? Welcome. Thank you. So I'll let whoever is doing the lead introduce themselves and the team. And then I guess we'll get right into it. So just however you want to present what your piece is, you know, and then we've left time. For us to ask questions as well, but we're giving you a time of introduction and whatever presentation, as long as it doesn't go beyond 15 minutes, that gives us 15 minutes for questions. Yes, we sent um, we sent a PDF presentation that hopefully you'll be able to see on the screen. Yes, and I think Catherine was gonna ah uh, okay oh, absolutely share. Great, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Um, well, while Catherine's getting that set up, we'll just introduce ourselves. Uh, thank you so much for having us this evening. Uh, we're, we're happy to be here for this interview, and um, thank you for giving us 
the opportunity to um, be considered for the School Street Project. My name is Emily Wright. I'm a landscape architect and principal at Wright Ostermeyer Landscape Architects. We go by BOLA for short. Um, we're also joined with by um, Catherine Ostermeyer. She's joining us remotely. She's also a principal and landscape architect. And we also have Nick Betts. My name is Nicholas Betts. I'm with Meridian Engineers. We've teamed up, teamed up with Bola. Uh, I am also a landscape architect and you can, engineer. You, I'm going to, uh, this is not be being particular. I want people at home to listen and the, the mic, at oh, least okay. get semi close to the sure. mic. Sure. And speak loud so people can hear us. Not Absolutely. Thank you. Introduce yourself again. <laughs> All right. My name is Nicholas Betts. I'm also a landscape architect. I'm with Meridian Associates. We're teaming up with Wola. Uh, Meridian Associates is a civil engineering firm. I also do a lot of civil engineering related work. So we want to give you um, a brief overview of our, of our firm, tell you a little bit about ourselves, um, introduce you to the different roles of our project team and how we plan to approach your project. And then um, we're happy to take questions, any questions that you might have. So our firm is three years old. We're a relatively new firm. Um, however, we started working together, Catherine and I, about 12 years ago. We met in graduate school at UMass. That's actually where we met Nick as well. So we've all known each other and uh, worked together for a long time. Um, Catherine and I decided to start our own firm because we wanted to have a work culture and um, approach to projects that really reflects our values. And uh, we wanted to talk about those because they really influence um, our projects and how we communicate with, with clients. Um, at our core, we're optimists. Um, all of the projects that we approach have pretty significant constraints, and sometimes those can seem overwhelming, but we've gotten really good at finding the opportunities in every, every project. Um, and part of that process is, is really digging into the context and the history and the people involved with the projects. So we spend a lot of time getting to know a site, understanding its history, how people use it. Um, and we also prioritize listening to our clients, um, understanding what's important, what the main issues are, understanding um, what the time and uh, resource constraints are, are really important and we put those we put those first um, a little bit more about wola as a firm um, combined we have over 20 years of experience um, we are fully insured we're a certified woman-owned business uh, we have two offices one in northampton mass and one in watertown so lunenburg is conveniently right in the middle of both of those locations. Um, and we both have experience working across New England. Um, our design approach, as I had previously mentioned, of site analysis is really important to us. Um, we like to understand you know, everything from the history to the ecological processes on a site. Um, we like to come up with imaginative design solutions for for our clients' problems. We feel like the site constraints are often how we get to be the most creative. We don't apply a cookie cutter approach to our, our projects. Every place is unique. Um, we try to engage uh, with our clients and with the users of sites so that we fully understand um, the issues involved and, and also the vision that people have for the, the future of a given site. Some of our recent project experience that we feel like is, is relevant uh, to your project. We've worked with the city of Springfield on a couple of parks and open space projects recently. We've done some planning projects for uh, Sudbury and for the town of Northampton and um, an athletic study for uh, Mount Wachusa Community College. Additionally, we've been working with um, the Montachusett Opportunity Council in Fitchburg. Um, they're now uh, making opportunity count. We have a couple of projects with them. Um, we've also been doing some work for Smith College, Amherst College, the Bement School, and Girls of the Inc. Girls Inc. of the Valley. And to introduce you to our project team, um, Wola will be taking on the leadership role in, in our team. 
We will be um, providing management for the project, design, um, coordinating with, with the consultants for the project. Um, I will be acting as principal in charge. Catherine will be the primary point person, the project manager. Um, additionally, we're relying on experts for uh, civil engineering and um, um, cost estimating services. And um, we've brought in a civil engineering consultant and cost estimating services because we can do some of those things, but we feel like we'll deliver a better design package if we have the expertise of a 30-person civil engineering office um, and an office that specializes in cost estimates for construction projects just like this. Um, so a lot of expertise behind this group of, of folks that you're seeing. And um, we'll dive into a little bit more detail about what each person brings to the table that's relevant to your, your project. Um, so my background is primarily in higher education, municipal projects, um, institutional projects, and custom residential projects. Um, I'm licensed in Massachusetts and have been for a while now. Um, some of the examples of my work that you're looking at here include um, a park project in West Springfield, a playground project in Lexington, Kentucky, um, a streetscape improvement project at Turner's Falls, Massachusetts, and um, a campus um, planning and implementation project at uh, Providence College. Catherine Ostermeyer would be your uh, project manager and your main point person. She's also licensed in Massachusetts, and her experience extends from uh, residential projects, municipal projects, and institutional projects. Um, some of the examples of her work are shown here, including institutional and residential projects. And one of Catherine's, uh, one of the things that Catherine is really great at is, is public engagement, um, and that's shown here um, at a charrette we did in Sudbury. Uh, Catherine will oversee and undertake site analysis, uh, manage town community meetings, um, and oversee graphic design production. Um, she's also, she would also be responsible for coordinating directly with you and with our consultants. And now I'll turn it over to Nick and he'll introduce um, himself and talk a little bit about his firm's experience. Sure. Uh, so first I'm gonna introduce John Ings who couldn't be here tonight, but he is uh, Vice President at Meridian Engineers, uh, Meridian Associates, sorry. Um, He's licensed in Massachusetts. He's been doing this for a very long time. He's the head of our municipal um, department. He handles all of these types of, of contracts and work. Uh, the project that you're seeing on the screen is actually right down the street. That's the Thomas Passio School. We were paired with uh, DiGiorgio, uh, DiGiorgio Architects um, as their civil to do a site evaluation for ADA accessibility, uh, overall circulation of the site, and potential reuse for that uh, building. <clears throat> myself on the next slide here I've been doing this for a while myself I have 10 years experience I'm also licensed in Massachusetts as a landscape architect working towards getting my PE uh, this project on here is actually uh, the alewife stormwater wetland in Cambridge it was a 14 acre site that was basically nothing and as part of a combined sewer overflow project they turned it into a park with uh, uh, bike lanes, amphitheaters, a stabilized aggregate path, boardwalks, overlooks, and that actually treats a lot of the stormwater runoff from some of the abutting neighborhoods in the Cambridge uh, Huron neighborhoods. Uh, it's a very fascinating project with lots of green infrastructure techniques, sustainability built into it, um, and, and techniques that I think would, would do well at this park in Lunenburg. Um, hi everyone. Uh, can you hear or see me all right right now? Yes. 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 Okay, great. So I'm Catherine Ostermeyer. I'm happy to be here tonight with the team. Um, I'm going to walk you through our approach to this project and share with you some images and projects that we've done in the past that we thought um, would be helpful in understanding our approach and what it would be like to work with WOLA for this project. Uh, our first step is always a kickoff meeting and a thorough site analysis. 
So after an initial meeting with the administrative contacts and the select board and stakeholders um, to understand their perspective and goals for the project, we'll undertake a thorough site analysis of the property over at 30 School Street. Um, we're happy to have Meridian on board with us and we'll be working with them to understand all of the opportunities and constraints of the site, um, drawing on their expertise, as Nick said, with stormwater, utilities, and also the ability to pick up any necessary topographic information. I wanted to share with you a slide of a project we recently completed. This was for the city of Northampton, Massachusetts. We did a river swim study, focusing on formal and informal river swimming in the Northampton area. Um, they wanted to understand where people were going and to um, begin to think about any possible improvements to these areas. Um, this here is an example of our initial base map. Um, we have found that a clear graphic presentation ensures that stakeholders and community members are oriented to the spatial layout of the site. So everyone has a good baseline of information because they all come with so many um, different perspectives. Um, here we provided the basic overall site plan with photos, and these photos allow community members to orient themselves to the plan. Sometimes we think of, oh, that's where that view is from, and it allows them to start putting together the um, spaces of the site. We also provided information um, as an overlay of the existing land use and zoning, and this gives everyone um, some additional information information on what's surrounding the areas of interest. We also provided information on the existing wetland. And as you can imagine, along the Connecticut River um, and the Barrett Brook, we have wetlands, we have riverfront areas, and up at this red dot, we also have the existing swimming areas. So this is you know, providing that baseline of information um, with clear graphic overlays which are easy to understand and prevent, or pardon me, present a sense of a cohesive process and a presentation to the viewers. The next step in this process, once we've completed the site analysis, is to present this information to the town and to the select board, as well as community members and stakeholders. And that would be at a community meeting. Um, in 2019, the town of Sudbury purchased a historic farm, which totaled about 32 acres. And in addition, they wanted to understand how they might use this property. So they engaged with WOLA to undertake a community design charrette, um, similar to what you all are doing in Lunenburg, um, doing community meeting, site analysis, and then coming up with some concept design alternatives for the select board to consider as they moved forward. Um, we put together an evening program where we presented our site analysis and we also created a series of activities to really engage with the community and we worked closely with the town to develop these activities so that we accurately represented them and made sure that we were getting information that they would find helpful. Um, the first step as people entered the charrette was to welcome them with a where do you, where do you live um, board and they were invited to place pins on a large blown up map of where they lived so that we were gathering um, some demographic data right off the bat of where people lived in relation to Broad Acres Farm. Um, we also created a series of activity stickers. Um, and this is so that we could understand what sort of activities the town wanted to undertake. And it also gave us some spatial information. So, what activities do you want to do and where do you want to do those activities so that we could begin to understand oh people want to see um, livestock down in this pasture down here or oh people really want a walking trail up to the north and so that gave us some additional information to inform our ultimate concept designs it also um, made it a little bit fun which i think is really important for community engagement you know, we do ask questions and we invite people to speak up um, at the outset, but this is also a great opportunity for people who might not feel comfortable public speaking to go around and still have their voice heard and um, lend their input to the process of shaping the town or the public space around them. 
It's also important to understand the aesthetic preferences of a community. Um, for Sudbury, we actually developed a voting bean exercise with photos of different styles of amenity. So for example, here we have walking path preferences. Perhaps they prefer a, a very broad concrete path or a more narrow uh, asphalt path or something a little more informal. Um, this way, the community was able to walk around to different stations and drop their voting beans in the jars of their aesthetic preference. Um, in this way, um, we were able to gather information on how the ultimate concept might work. And we actually uh, created a ranked voting system with different types of beans. You could use a lima bean, a red bean, or a black-eyed pea. And that way, in addition to understanding uh, general preference, we also were able to account for first preference, second preference, and third preference. Um, this ultimately informed our concept design, and we discovered that the people of Sudbury tended to prefer a nature playground, um, they liked a more rustic architecture style bench, and they preferred a pine needle walking path as opposed to like a wider asphalt pathway. So once we've gone through our um, community meeting, um, we move on to the concept design. And this is again where we would reconvene with Meridian Associates and begin developing concept based on the information we've gathered from the community and also from the select board and town stakeholders. Um, in Lunenburg, we're also fortunate to have some preliminary work that was done by the Montachusett Vocational Technical School. So it's always nice to have a starting point and a common frame of reference. Um, in this case, um, we're looking at a preliminary concept we developed for the Northampton Swim Project. And this is along the Connecticut River Greenway. And we had started to think about a wayfinding plan and where the larger gateway signs might be, as well as where swimming and boating guidelines may be and what those signs could look, look, look like. So this is starting to give the town uh, or city an understanding of what their, what their options are. And what the um, possibilities may be. Um, for Broad Acres Farm, we developed, at, in Sudbury, we developed some initial concepts, which we reviewed um, with the planning and uh, town stakeholders. And so what we came up with were a couple of alternatives. The first was sort of maximum intervention. And this is where we include everything. We've got a recreation field, multifamily housing, um, light agriculture, a picnic pavilion, a picnic area, a playground, a splash pad, it's all in here. And we've created a general legend and layout so that the town is able to understand um, the spatial layout and how we can incorporate those amenities. And we thought, you know, some of the um, wish lists and um, vocational tech uh, concept designs have some similar um, site amenities um, in, their, in their programmatic approach as well. And then we also gave them a minimal intervention. And this is where maybe we do less. It's a lighter touch. We include walking paths. There's still space for a playground to be, reloc to be located, as well as some picnic areas. We've got space for parking. And we found a way to reuse some of the existing buildings, so a more minimal touch. After we presented these concept alternatives to the select board and to the planning and environmental staff, we got their feedback and we created a final concept design which incorporated their input. So we, in the end, had sort of a nice large um, field with picnic areas. Um, we have a playground over here as well as parking with some multi-family housing, and we've retained some of their um, sort of historical agricultural space so that you still feel the character of Broad Acres Farm. I know that you know, ADA accessibility is important to Lunenburg and to all of us. Um, I wanted to share a couple of projects that we've recently completed. The first is at Amherst College, and this um, involved ADA improvements to provide access 
from their, really their heart of the campus, the central area where they have their convocation and their commencement, um, over to the library, which is sort of just out of the frame across this crosswalk here. And we, it's an Olmstedian landscape on their central quad. And what we did is we carefully designed uh, the topography and replaced the stairs so that the approach to the library is along a gentle walkway, which is integrated into the existing campus fabric, uh, being sensitive to the history and honoring the original vision um, of the campus. Catherine, before, before you continue, I want, to, oh, yeah. I want to make sure, I want to be cognizant of the time. It is not my intent to oh. be rude, but no. I want to leave some time from the board to ask questions. I apologize. Oh, no, that's yep. okay. Well, why don't I just flip through these quickly and we'll wrap it up. Sure. Uh, Smith College Washburn House. We did three concept designs to improve ADA accessibility um, at a renovated dormitory. Colony Hills Terrace. Uh, another Olmstedian landscape in a Springfield neighborhood. We created some visualizations so that the community could understand proposed improvements. And Mitnick Park, um, which Emily worked on and is, um, includes ADA gardening areas as well as picnic and an outdoor pavilion. And thank you. We are happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so I would uh, open it up if, if somebody wants to closing remark. Otherwise, I'll open it up to the board. Absolutely. Questions? Sure. So I'll open questions. it up to the board if anybody has any questions. <coughs> I have a question. Sure. So first of all, I don't know if that our mic is. What would working. you, it, it, you won't hear. It's really for, oh, for okay. broadcast. Great. So, Perfect. Um, can you say a little bit after reading our RFP what you understand about the project and, and and did you do a site visit? And if so, what is your impression of what the town is looking for? Sure, I will, I will touch on this briefly and then I will allow Catherine to, to elaborate. Um, yeah. We, Nick and I stopped by the site earlier this evening and took a look. Um, and it's our understanding that um, the town has sort of been grappling with a number of, for a number of years of what to do with the school, whether or not to demolish it or not. Um, and how to mess, best make use of this this property. And after walking around, we can understand that, you know, there's some complexities to the site. There's some driveways that are shared. Um, there's some topography changes that, that definitely complicate things. Uh, but you're, the program that you're proposing in the, in the RFP is really interesting. And I think this could be a great opportunity to bring people to what feels like now a currently underutilized site. Um, but Catherine, I'm sure, has lots more to say about that as well. Hi, everyone. Um, so yes, so in terms of thinking about your priorities for the site, my understanding um, is that you're looking to add parking um, to address a deficit of parking in the area, and that you'd also like um, more of a passive recreational space, um, which includes opportunities for a farmer's market. And I noticed in the vocational tech renderings, they have structures sort of overhead, so that you're, you're looking for something like that, um, a playground, as well as generally a place for the community to gather. My thoughts are that it sounds like you really want a flexible space. And um, I've done some thinking also about the existing primary school and the demolition. Um, I sort of took a brief look through the property condition assessment and looked at the photos of sort of some of the, you know, the brick and the interiors. Um, so I think there's an interesting way to provide these amenities that you're looking for. So not a formal park. Uh, well, a formal park, but you know, not um, like a big water park or anything, but just more of a community gathering space that allows the community to use it in flexible ways throughout the year. Um, I think it's also important to incorporate um, parts of the primary school. And whether that's through some materials or footprints, thinking creatively about that, um, I think it could be a really special space. Um, Thank you. 
Is that? That's good. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not grading the answers. Sorry. I just <laughs> sorry, I can't uh, see you, so I'm just not sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I realize that you you can't see yeah. us here. So that's the general understanding. Yeah. Is that um, that's what you're looking for? Not overly programmed, but flexible, and I think that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. So, so talk to me about Wola's approach between or the balance between the artistic part of your work. Mm -hmm. and the engineering part of your work that has more constraints about, you know, maybe structural or environmental, or you said there were sloping yeah. changes, everything. How, how do you balance those in your projects that you're looking at? So let's see here. Um, in terms of the design, the artistic and the engineering, I think that's actually, that's to me what design is, is balancing um, the aesthetics and drawing people in while also um, being able to undertake the engineering and the critical problem solving um, that makes it a successful design. That's the form and the function. And, um, you know, with WOLA, we've worked on, you know, sort of custom residential projects, but we also do work with uh, making opportunity count, um, taking care of Head Start preschool programs. And so being creative with materials, being thoughtful with our layout, and making sure that our um, accessibility works so that everybody can get there. And also involving engineers like Meridian who bring things to the table that we might not. We're committed to forward thinking stormwater management. And with Nick's experience over in Cambridge, that's a great way to start thinking about how we can work with the topography over at 30 School Street and, you know, do forward thinking work for Lindenberg. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just add to that that we really carefully select um, engineers to work with because we like to be collaborating from the very beginning. You know, we don't want to mm -hmm. come up with an artful design and then just pass it on and say, okay, now you have to figure out how to make this work. Um, we try to partner with with engineers that understand our process and like to collaborate from the very beginning. So any sort of big idea that we come up with can be supported in in reality. So my last question, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, do you have something? I was gonna just <laughs> add to that. As a landscape architect working for a number of engineers, that, uh, that overlap is critical to have from the very beginning. Engineers, as you all know, are very analytical, very calculated. It works like this, I don't wanna change it. Landscape architects are very artistic. What if we tried this? And if you have somebody like myself that can talk both languages, that's where you really get the best type of design and outcome because you have an understanding from both perspectives. So last question for me is from all of you, if you had to say in two sentences, you know, maybe possibly three quickly, why, what would make you stronger in this project than anybody else who was applying? What, what are your major strengths? I think our major strengths are that we're really, really good at listening and pulling information from um, community stakeholders. We're great at getting a vision that really supports what people want and then putting that on paper so that people can really see it and understand it. Do I also get three sentences? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I would say uh, just being able to communicate the idea clearly and, effect and effectively from both an engineering and landscape architecture perspective is always helpful. It helps the community understand. It helps the contractors understand. It helps the, any stakeholder understand what exactly we're proposing. And I think between the two of us, you kind of get two, two different LA perspectives. And the engineering perspective, you're going to get a better end product because it's more comprehensive. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, so Emily touched on the um, meaningful listening um, and engagement, which is important. It's not sort of lip service. It's at the core of what we do. But I would say that we are also imaginative with the way that we take what we've got and make something great with it. Um, we're creative and clever with our resources, and we're respectful of our clients' resources. And I think that to make a project happen, You've got to have everything on board so that it can move forward, and we're really good at that. Excellent. 
Hey, good, e good evening. I have a follow-up question. <clears throat> this is related to the project experience that's in our uh, in the packet that was provided to us. So for municipal experience, there's notes about Northampton, Springfield Park improvements, th the discussion on Broad Acres, and then also Turner Turner Falls. Um, Turner Falls is listed as 2013. Was that a typo? You guys said you guys were only around no, for that, years. No, that's 2013. So that was work that I had done with a previous firm. Okay. Yeah, so I was project manager and, and lead designer uh, for that project for a previous firm. Okay. And then I do want to note, it is in the comments um, down at the sort of bottom of that um, spreadsheet so that we um, we're sure to acknowledge um, where the work was done. Got it. And then there's um, the work at Northampton and, and Springfield, it says it's expected 2021. Is that currently in process right now? That's currently in process right now. Um, the projects in Springfield are under con construction. I do believe Angelina Park actually just wrapped up. Um, we need to go do a punch list. And then the um, Northampton swim study, we're in the process of wrapping that study up now as well. We just had our last public forum last week. Okay. And are there any concerns about the timelines? Um, I think that we're trying to target here, being the spring. Um, I can speak to that. Um, <laughs> there are not. Um, we think it's reasonable. Um, I've done some sort of preliminary planning to make sure that it is feasible. And I think that if um, you know the contract is awarded within the next week or two, uh, moving forward with an initial kickoff. Uh, shortly thereafter, and then uh, site analysis with a community meeting in late November, um, the initial community meeting, and then design through uh, December, uh, another community meeting in uh, mid-January, and then uh, wrapping it up after that within about a month, probably less. So it's feasible and we have the staff to undertake it. And are there um, I know that the two of you have been here today to present yourselves, but do you have, are there more associates within the firm? Yes, we have an employee um, that helps us with production of graphics and things like that. She would probably, well, she would definitely also be assisting us with, with public meetings um, and gathering, gathering feedback and also visiting the site and site analysis. Um, and then Nick's company. Yeah, we have a, <laughs> it's a company of 30 people. There's probably six uh, professional engineers right now and then a staff of support to help with everything from due diligence research all the way through drafting plans, concepts, anything they need. So we're really just an assistance role to WOLA and we have plenty of resources. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, th thank you. Um, uh, Catherine already touched on it, but I uh, on the uh, possibility that aspects of that primary school may be retained, uh, you know, a footprint, a shell, something along those lines. Do you? Ha I did not go to your website. Do you have any um, examples of similar work? Have you done? Uh, have you incorporated similar structures into uh, your work? Mm, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, I've incorporated. You know, I think in um, the con at the conceptual level, we did in Sudbury. Um, I don't know that we have, um, in terms of our built projects, Emily. Um, for I've I've not repurposed an entire building for a project before. Um, I do know that for the Turner's Falls streetscape project, there were a number of of really large pieces of granite that had been raised planters. And we found ways of utilizing those as, as seating. We modified the, accessibility was a significant part of that project. So we had to modify things pretty significantly. Um, but we did try to reuse those large pieces of granite um, whenever possible. Okay. Yeah, the, the idea wasn't to put you on the spot at all. I just didn't know if, the, I didn't know if there were any, and, and certainly you'll see new things as you go along, but I just mm -hmm. didn't know if you had any ready, ready, readily, uh, readily available uh, samples of, mm -hmm. of having done such a thing. So. It's a somewhat unique characteristic of a site to have an existing building on it that you know, I can multi-purpose this foundation. So that's, <laughs> it'll be interesting for sure. 
Mr. Dwyer, and no questions. Mr. Marino. And look at that, right on time. I want to thank you, Emily and Nick, for being here in person, and Catherine for joining us uh, uh, remote from Hawaii. Uh, let's just say it's Hawaii, why not? Uh, but thank you all for your presentation and your. It would be nice. <laughs> well, since you're remote, we could say anything, right? So. Yeah. But I appreciate your input and your responses and your time here this evening. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. Should we do Raise the nest, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Oh, there he is. Please. <laughs> okay. I didn't know if you were here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hello. Okay, Hi. so let me introduce you. So our second interview in this is um, Ray Danette's Landscape Architecture. And if, if you and your team, if you're here alone, please come to the podium because we can use the microphone. Okay. So it's for people at home to hear. I wish I was remote in Hawaii, but. <laughs> <laughs> if you were remote, I would say you were in Hawaii. Too. <laughs> so if you would introduce yourself. Sure. I'm, take it away, uh, you have. Yeah, we're trying to do the same thing for everybody. So, like, okay. up to a fifteen-minute presentation that you can yeah, start. Yeah, mine, mine is quick and dirty, and okay. I leave the questions to me. Uh, I'm Ray Dunitz, um, landscape architect in Boston. Um, I am familiar with this area. Of, of, uh, a uh, mentor of mine, son, has a balancing company in Lunenburg. Um, where they balance giant rocket engines and stuff like that, turbines and whatnot. <laughs> so we've been out here and we do a lot of work in Fitchburg and Worcester, so a lot of public projects. So um, I can, if you'd like. I have it up and just if Where'd Pat you can. Where do I look? Um, behind. <laughs> you can angle yourself if yeah. you want. I mean, you can <laughs> angle it. Oh, okay. it on the screen as well. Yeah, I need, I need the cues. Yeah, that, no, that's fine. I understand. Okay. Um, so um, with that, I'll start my presentation. Um, who we are, um, Ray Dennis Landscape Architecture, we've been around since 2002. Um, 75 to 80% of our work is public municipal work. Um, we do a lot of work with Massachusetts towns and cities, parks, playgrounds, um, master plans, um, athletic fields, cemeteries, um, but I've been a landscape architect for 35 years. I was the president of the Boston Society of Landscape Architects for several years, and um, we're thrilled to be, have the opportunity to talk to you. Um, our, um, our firm um, prides itself on community engagement. We're great listeners. Um, we like to collaborate with our communities. Um, that back and forth always leads to the, the most love, well-loved designs and parks. And um, we uh, consider ourselves great communicators. Um, we're a somewhat small firm. We have seven people. Um, I'm the principal, but I'm also going to be your prime contact. Um, you won't have a junior uh, landscape architect or project manager. You'll always be contacting me 24-7 uh, available. Um, and I will be leading the charge. All my folks in the, will be in the background. Um, we're also sustainability experts, um, very interested in green infrastructure and how we can promote uh, climate resiliency um, through, through landscape interventions. And lastly, we're passionate about what we do. Next, please. So um, we've had an opportunity to visit the site, um, the 2.4 acre site. Um, we are working with uh, two firms that have already worked on this project, uh, Vertex Engineering, who did the, um, the building assessment, and uh, PMC uh, Cost Estimators, who also worked on the estimates. I think it's gonna be important to establish a budget. Um, you as a select board are very interested in that. And our job as designers is to maintain that budget um, um, but we have PMC, who's got all the back experience and Vertex to know what to do with that building. Next, please. Um, 
your RFP was very clear on the scope items. You're looking to make this a flexible space for uh, farmers markets, uh, possibly uh, some types of shade structure, bandstand, gazebo. Um, we have uh, done many projects similar. In fact, I have a sim very similar project to your project that I'll, I'd like to show you a little bit later. Next, please. Um, also, identity is, a, is important with um, identifying this, this site, drawing people in to the town for a sense of pride um, when this becomes a park. Right now, currently, the, the, you know, there is quite an opportunity for some type of gateway into this park to celebrate the park space. That currently, it does not exist. Next, please. Um, you know, and the community's voice is extremely important in us helping us generate ideas. Um, we don't live here. Um, however, we have the ability to provide uh, or facilitate conversation with all community members, whether it be in-person meetings um, or Zoom meetings um, or um, in some situations right now with some towns we're working with, like Weymouth, we're doing hybrids where we have uh, an in you know, uh, in-house meeting with breakouts, um, breakout tables, so that we can get everybody's opinion and, and share everybody's voice. Next, please. Um, we want to make this a special place. Uh, the concept of placemaking um, is one we're very uh, familiar with and have a lot of expertise in um, making this something special, whether it be a natural play area, um, farmer's market, uh, band shelter, a place for, for concerts, and I am a musician as well uh, on the side, so music is very important to me. Next, please. Um, I talked a little bit about green infrastructure, nature-based solutions. We want to drain things uh, in a sustainable way, not tax, you know, uh, public infrastructure. Um, this is an inexpensive way that helps the planet, allowing water to infiltrate into the ground rather than running off. Next, please. Here's another, um, another graphic of how nature-based solutions work. We can make man-made wetlands um, to collect water. Um, they're very beautiful. Collect, uh, um, we can collect birds and bees and create pollinator gardens and that kind of thing, which I think are interesting for children as well as helping the environment. Next, please. Once again, um, you're our primary focus. I'll be your main contact uh, as principal in charge and Vertex PMC will work behind the scenes with the, for the engineering aspects of the job. Um, Vertex is a very large engineering firm, as you know, um, and they have all sorts of experts in contaminated buildings. Um, and PMC, we're starting from a base point where they've already done a lot of the cost estimating. We'll need to update those cost estimates to 20, 2021 numbers, 2022 numbers, which they have the ability to do. Next, please. So a little bit about our process. Um, we. We listen to the community to define what the issues are, what their hopes and dreams are. We like to call it blue sky thinking. Then we'll inspire them with design, um, prepare um, these green infrastructure solutions. And we like to test our, uh, our um, concepts internally to make sure that they'll work well and then produce a final design. Next, please. These are some of all the concepts that go into our Mass park master planning work, um, including um, um, collecting input, designing, placemaking, um, learning about, I'm very interested in history. We do a lot of historic preservation work, um, what types of recreation we want, sustainability, green infrastructure, and healthy soil. Next, please. So I just want to share one case study of a similar project that we did in, in my ne neck of the woods, Jamaica Plain. Um, there was an old um, Victorian house located on Jamaica Pond that um, was historic. Next, please. Next sl slide, please. The site was actually 2.3 acres. Yours is 2.4. 
Um, next. And over the years, the house became uh, um, used for things that we don't like to have our public spaces used for, um, became dilapidated. The city of Boston was not really able to figure out a program element um, for this building. The community wanted to save the building, obviously, because it was a beautiful, historic house. But ultimately, um, the decision was made to demolish the building and make a park there. Next, please. So we um, made the connection with history to create an outline of this house that was once there um, with granite blocks that show the outline um, and commemorates some of the important dates of historic dates of this area. Um, Jamaica Pond was, was used to, uh, um, for ice making and it was a big ice harvesting pond. Um, so we have a lot of uh, open space which can be used flex in flexible manner um, historic uh, interpretive signage. And next, please. Um, and it shows how this space can be used. Yoga in the park, um, <laughs> concerts, um, interpretive signage, and historic signs, because this is uh, a historic site. Next, please. So at the end of the day, you know, this is, uh, all about Lunenburg, um, your community uh, is important um, to help us understand the needs of the town and we'll work um, through facilitating and helping them generate ideas of what they might see. Obviously you've come up with, with some and we'll test them out, see how folks like them um, through a process of two or three community meetings um, we will uh, collect all that information, try to boil it down into some uh, alternative designs, get uh, the community's feedback, and obviously the select board and the town manager's feedback on, on, on direction. We like to also integrate the other agencies uh, in town, public, I don't know, they, different towns call them different things, but public works, um, parks department, um, we like to get everybody's feedback, interview them, and then at the end of the day, synthesize all those um, comments and, and feedback into a final design with um, input from our engineer. Um, if we're going to incorporate green infrastructure, um, additional parking, and then um, have PMNC prepare a budgetary estimate for you to go out to town meeting with. So. With that, I'll open it up to questions. Hope I kept it oh, short and sweet. One minute early. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'll go down. I'll, anybody want to start with any questions they might have? The, uh, the Jamaica Plain project was very interesting to me because it is very similar to what we're trying to accomplish here. However, this, if you walk the site, there's, there are a lot of challenges, which I think were alluded uh, earlier here, uh, one of which one of the biggest challenges is that there's a number of homes abutting the property. Yeah. Uh, and, but we'd like to see some kind of a hat shell or, um, you know, some kind of a music venue in that park. So any, have you put any thought into that? I mean, just uh, superficially or... Well, ultimately, of? like I said, we let the community kind of guide the how, how they want, you know, the neighbors are going to certainly going to have some input on that, how they want, but ultimately we can, we can work with, um, you know, directing the, the music away. I, there, I've seen that's behind the Verizon building, yes. that, that side. So if, if we project the music in the other direction and put some buffer planting in, that will help, help them a lot. Um, I'm sure they're going to have, uh, a lot of input and we want their input. We want everybody to be ultimately satisfied with, with what this is going to become. But um, it could be, uh, this could be a structure. We, 
at this point in the master plan, you know, we're, we're dealing with diagrams and, and not so much forms, but we do have, um, we do have an architect, we have an architect that we've worked with in the past that, that designs, uh, very interesting structures that could, you know, do some baffling and that kind of thing to help, help prevent any sound moving over there. I mean, it's not like you're going to have a concert, you know, every day, maybe every weekend in the, in the summer, there'll be a concert program. Um, in Jamaica Pond, we have uh, a bunch of guys that get together with fiddles and, you know, guitars and play on the benches, you know, it's joyous, you know, it's, you see crowds walking around the pond and they stop and they listen and um, could be that type of thing as well. Okay. Thank you. Yep, sure. Dwyer? Um, based on the, the RFP, do you have any concerns with meeting the uh, project schedule that no. was outlined? No, we're seven, we're seven people. Um, we anticipate this being a, the, the biggest concern I have is not much gets done between Thanksgiving and Christmas, so you lose a month. Um, things don't get rolling again till like mid-January. Mm -hmm. Everybody's back from vacation. So, um, you know, we're into October right now. Sometimes it takes a while to get a contract going. And, um, but we can, we can, you know, we can conduct our community meetings maybe once a month or, mm -hmm. you know, I like to have three. Um, we like to do a site analysis in the beginning, um, get people familiarized with the project, get their input, and then do a couple of two or three designs, um, get their feedback on those designs. I like A, I like B, I like this about C, and then synthesize everything together and uh, look for everybody's consensus. So I think spring 2022 is, is reasonable. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, thank you. I um, I got excited when I saw the Victorian ruin as well. Uh, do you have? It, I I didn't know where you were going to go with that. I didn't know if you were had preserved part of it, but but I like what you did with it. But do you have any ex, uh, ex, experience or examples of where you've saved portions of the building? Uh, well, that one actually, I actually don't have a slide of it, but we did. We saved. Um, we made things that were part of the building, paving, <laughs> but not. You mean you mean in terms of architecturally? Yes. Well, that we don't have an architect on the team, but I, through the conditions assessment, you know, we have Vertex who worked on that, and I believe they have an architect that did that work. Um, what we can work with them on um, on identifying what can stay and what can go. Um, and I think that's something that we open up for discussion, like, the, you know, what part of the building does the community like that, you know, they want to preserve? Um, and then there's like the financial um, realities of, you know, it's almost more expensive to save, preserve a piece than it is to, you know, yes, raise it. So we we can present those options and look at numbers. Like I said, PCA is already done. Uh, I'm sorry, PM and C have already done. Um, you know, quite a bit of uh, they understand the building. I think so. We can we can look at ways to to preserve it. But we're landscape architects, um, and um, I would bring on Vertex to to help kind of identify what portions can be saved it seems to me it's you know it's they're, they're not like little pavilion type things that are coming off the building or whatever it seems like a very rectangular, rectangular yeah. yeah so did, can i ask you a question what 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 do you what would you like to save uh, well, it, it's really not asking it from a personal perspective. It's just that the idea of saving some portion of that building hasn't been ruled out. Yeah, yep. Know, yep. Uh, uh, you know, everything from a wall to the shell. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, and then having it sort of open air inside. That could possibly be. We, um, I did another project, and I didn't bring in a visual example of it with me, where it was in the city of Lawrence. We took an old warehouse. We left the walls and the steel beams that held the warehouse, the walls together, and we painted those bright red and then built a park inside the building. <laughs> so it was open air. But um, that's a very urban condition, Lawrence. Yeah. Um, so there might be ways to, to do it. It, it. It's kind of like, you know, I, I think we need to come to like what the town is comfortable s sure. or how much they're going to want to spend. I just didn't know if, they, if it goes that way, if you had it done any percent. Yeah, I'm, that, that I didn't think about putting into, it was, it was like, it's an older project, so I didn't include it, but it, I, can, I can share pictures of that, you know, if you're interested in seeing what that looks like. It's it, pretty cool. I'd, I'd be very interested in seeing okay. that. Yeah. I'll, I'll shoot that over to you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for the uh, great presentation tonight. Oh, you're welcome. So I don't have any questions. Okay. <laughs> so I have a couple of questions. Okay. And that is, the first one would be, um, how do you, you've doing this for 30 years, you said, how do you balance the creative side of what you do with the engineering side about what you do and when does one take the forefront and the other not, or just how do you meld those? Okay, that's like a philosophical question. <laughs> I've, been, but, I've been known to ask those kind of questions. <laughs> no, it's a good question. Um, we, um, you know, this is a puzzle. We, we, we have to identify what the problem is or what, what we're trying to solve, and that is getting everybody's input the blue sky thinking, what do you want here? Um, additional parking. Um, there are some engineering reality, oops, sorry, some engineering realities of that. It creates more, you know, if we do it out of asphalt, it creates more impermeable area, which requires the need for stormwater, more stormwater management. And so, we look at it like creatively, like, is there another way to do this? Can we do it out of gravel um, so that it, perme you know, it permeates through the ground, infiltrates the stormwater? Um, they, go, they go hand in hand. And um, Vertex, um, the, the gentleman that's in our proposal that, that um, uh, we're working with was formerly at another firm called Par Corporation. I don't know if you're familiar. They're out of Rhode Island, um, and we did a you know we did a nine acre park in in Plymouth, um, and we were we were at the we were doing the charrettes together basically. I mean, engineers love to design. Um, we love to criticize their design sometimes, but, <laughs> but like incorporate new things. But, you know, with that one, we're dealing with a coastal, a coastal park. We had all this, we had like 15 state permits we had to file. Um, uh, coastal zone management wanted us to, they want, the engineer wanted to put a concrete wall up at the, along the coast to prevent storm action from destroying the park. Coastal zone management wanted a soft, landscape solution. Um, we ultimately very creatively worked together on that with the, what plantings with, withhold a, a major nor'easter. Um, and um, and, and uh, I think we, we like to work collaboratively, co collaboratively with our engineers. We, we find that they're very good at problem solving, but you know, we'll, let's try this. There's a lot of you know, the green infrastructure stuff is really exciting now for even for landscape architects to do, you know, man-made wetlands and um, um, that type of thing. So I don't know if I... Nope, I, you answered my question. I mean, the reason I ask is because while charrettes can give you an idea of what idealistically or from a, a conceptual point of view, what the townspeople are looking at, we eventually are looking for a firm who has vision and says, okay, this is the most aesthetic way to do that. Right. And yet the most engineering 
sound way to do this too. Right. So. We're we're going into this not looking at it as like this is this is all we're going to do. We're looking at it like this is a this is going to be a project moving forward, and we're we're going to design it realistically, um, creatively, um, and something that can be implemented. Sure. So my next question is, I, I saw, as we looked over everybody's, not just yours, but everybody's, you're all landscape art, you know, art, architects and landscape designers, artists, licensed. And so there's lots of interesting gardens and they're beautiful and everything. And, and one of the things that struck me just as you were talking and I was looking through your list of projects is, is what kind of forethought is given to the fact of maintaining those? Like, it's not like we have a a horticulturist working in town that's going to maintain the gardens. The gentleman sitting behind you, his department as the DPW director is going to be the one who's going to be needing to maintain these. And so what kind of sensitivity and, and forethought is given to those? It's, it's, it's huge. Um, nothing is ever low maintenance um, or no maintenance, I should say. <laughs> we try to limit the maintenance and we do, um, we do work, like that's what I said, we would like to coordinate with, with all the agencies and get their input. Will this work for you? Um, a lot of times the DPW will have an engineering staff member, or maybe you're the engineer. Okay. So, you know, engineers can talk to engineers about, about the realities of it, but the maintenance, um, you know, we do work in a lot of wealthy towns and we do work in a lot of towns that, you know, don't have huge staffs uh, and, and capacity. So, um, you know, in, in those situations, we keep it simple. Um, um, you know, in Boston, we call it snow and uh, mow and mow and blow, <laughs> you know, just mow the grass and blow the leaves. And, and that's about all they can, they can handle plowing, you know, um, we'll do materials that can be plowed. Um, the, I think we're looking for something a little, maybe more aesthetic than that, but obviously. No, but it, that can be done very creatively, you know. You, Fair enough. It's, it's really the sense of creating, you know, just enlivening that space, like activating it somehow. And that can be through programming and, and uh, uh, that, that Pine Bank project is just a passive park, you know, most of the time, but people rent it for the, con I mean, Organizations, orchestras use it for their summer concert series. Um, you know, the Emerald Necklace Conservancy does a lot of events there. You can pitch a tent, you know, you can get a tent there. We just did a, a, uh, a park in Provincetown, um, the Bas Relief Park. It was restoring a memorial there, but they use, they use that lawn for a Portuguese festival every year. And we had to design the space to fit their tent, <laughs> which, which seems backwards, but they have a certain dimensions. But yes, um, the realities of, of maintenance are always, we do a lot of work with the city of Worcester and they say, no, we don't do this. <laughs> this is how we do it. <laughs> so my next question is what, in towns where there may be, I'm not saying we're this town, but I'm just hypothetically saying there, that there are, competing ideas about what should be done at a location. Not that I'm looking for you as, as the, you know, the landscape architect to resolve the problem, but how have, have you been faced with that situation and in those situations, how have you at least been part of the solution in helping resolve those tensions? It's the way that I help, I mean, like I said, the community meetings are where we, where we, we, just get down and dirty and like everybody shares what, whatever's on their mind and we try to honor everybody's voice. Um, the way that we've resolved situations where not everybody agreed is we had more meetings. <laughs> okay. We, we broke some people down and just so that, you know, everybody negotiates and, and gets what they want. Um, they don't get everything that they want, but that that's basically life, right? Like <laughs> you get mostly what you want and maybe you let somebody else get what they want, you know? And so I think, I think that's part of the, uh, you know, the beauty of just letting everybody, and you know, we don't always want to hear 
oh, that looks great. You know, we want to hear, well, you know, there, I live right next to this park. I don't want a bunch of people like hanging out near my property, right. you know, that kind of thing. Okay. It's like, okay, well, let, let's try to address that. So last question is, now that you've presented all this, we've read this, if you had to put it in a nutshell in a couple sentences, what are your absolute strengths that would make you the right firm for this job? I think it's, it's our experience and working with, I, I don't know how many municipalities we've worked with, but you know, 30, 40, <laughs> you know, since 2002. Um, when it comes to build the project, we have the experience for publicly bid projects. We understand the procurement process. We understand, um, we understand um, how to design our, you know, when it, if it ever gets to the stage of building this, how to design our construction documents so that um, a low bidder doesn't come in and change order everything to get back to the accurate number. Um, and we manage, we manage the projects very tightly. Um, my experience, um, we get a little bit of sense of history here. I'm very much historic preservationist to your point. If we could save part of the building, that would be great. Um, you know, we've done a lot of Olmstead projects in the past and um, I think ultimately my di diverse background and, and kind of facilitating this conversation and getting to a design that everybody loves, I think is maybe what makes us a little bit unique. I mean, we just have been doing it for a long time. Not saying that I might be the right fit, but, um, um, you know, we feel like this is a very exciting project. Um, we didn't apply to the first, uh, the first go around. I think we had the conversation, um, well, at least with Julie, that um, we didn't feel we could do do the park justice with the the budget that was set. Um, we feel like now we have a, a good, a really good, solid budget, and we can, you know, go 110 percent, get you, get you a, a really beautiful park that that will be on the map. Excellent. Um, you're cl are you guys, you're close to Fitchburg, pretty close? Yeah, we're bored of them. We're so close that we bored of them. Okay, so we worked on Crocker Field. Oh, sure. Um, we worked on um, uh, a plan for uh, expanding the cemetery, the big cemetery that's out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And Fitchburg, when we worked on it, it was Fitchburg State College, but now it's a university, so. Yes. So we, this is, you know, not too far from where, and we're working a lot in Worcester right now, so we're out here quite a bit. Um, I will say too that we're very interested in, there's another park proposal that, that is, so we're hoping we can tie everything together if we do get this, but <laughs> that's for, the, for another conversation. Right. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. For the Lawrence project, can you explain, like, so was the intent of that project from the initiation to, to preserve the building and... Well, it's a guess? National Heritage Park okay. there, um, which um, commemorates the, the manufacturing industrial revolution kind of thing. So this is, this is associated with the museum. It's a foreground to a museum. So that idea um, came about, um, you know, they, they got a hold of this building and, and they couldn't use it for anything. So they said, let's make it, let's make it a park. So it became like a gateway to the museum. So you, people park their car, walk through the inside of an old factory building. And I had to go, I was, I was probably in my 20s at the time, I had to go measure stuff in this building and this horrible, like I didn't know what was in that, you know, what kind of toxic <laughs> materials were in there, but I had to crawl in all sorts of places. Um, but the result, um, I think was really, you have these brick walls and then these, you know, bright red painted buttresses, you know, the, the, the red it was just really stunning. And, and that's what, when you look up, you can, you know, 
how many times do you get to go in a building and, and see the see the sky? Mm -hmm. So definitely would love to see. I know you said you'd offer. I'd love to see images of that. Yeah, yeah, I can I can share that. Sure. Just a follow up question. That, so as far as the um, consideration for budget during that process was what considerations were made with the design aspect? It and was such a long time ago that right. we really can't like. I really can't. I mean, I think, I think, I can't remember to be honest with you. It was it was in probably in the nineties, mm -hmm. like thirty years ago. So, um, but the uh, the issue was it was cheaper. They didn't want to demolish the building, and it, they couldn't figure out what to what to use it for for programming. So. The idea was like, okay, let's let's selectively demolish it, you know, and 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 plant um, plant trees and shrubs in there and bent, put benches in there. And it's very small, you know. It's not like it's not this big. This this building is very small. Can I follow up to Heather's question? Mm -hmm. So our primary school is a wood frame building. Are you were you talking about uh, steel supports inside of that? Okay. Yeah. So what's left is kind of a steel structure. No. Well, brick brick and walls. Brick facade. Brick walls and the and the windows were all taken out, so you have the yeah. window openings at you know, pedestrian level. Um and then steel beams that kind of tie the brick walls together okay. structurally. I mean, it was built in the probably in the eighteen hundreds, that building. Was um, the steel pre existing or is that part of the design process? No, that was all Okay. The design was to make a, I mean, the big idea was to make a park inside of a building. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not a structural engineer. I would rely on my experts to, yep. to inform me on that. But if that was something that you wanted to pursue, you know, we're, we can put together as many options as, you know, that's the fun part is coming up with the ideas. So, great, thank you. Excellent. I thank you for your presentation and your, you know, appearing here tonight to talk about the project. So, and all your input. I'm going to go go listen to the Red Sox game. There you go. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. Is the other friend here in person? Or in person? That's it, right there. There in person too. Okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's kind of exactly what I, almost exactly what I pictured. It's pretty on. impressive. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Handle my phone. <laughs> I think I've been past here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. I'm guessing that's a Pixel 4, eh? Get, yeah. get comfortable, <laughs> we take off your jacket, and then we're going to... Right. You're going to be at the podium so because we need the microphone picture. for the people at home on like watching down, on down TV. Fall River, they got those murals and stuff. Well, the, the, the fact yeah, that it came up with the creative yep. solution like that's it's interesting. What's that? The creative solution like that's interesting. Yeah. Does anyone need to take a break? You've been here sitting for a while. Yeah, we, we have one member doing just that, so you have you have time. Don't rush. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. You got more than one copy? Oh, sorry. There's multiple sorry. copies sorry. here. Zoning out on everybody. It's all right. Uh, this is not a zoning meeting. Come on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Stable, I see. Say again. How old is the town hall? Oh, wow. It's it goes back to 1730, the, the, the top one. Yeah. 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 I don't know exactly what part was the original. 
because it got moved a few times and then when it was brought here, it was lifted up and they built a floor under it, and, which they did a lot of times back then, which I didn't. <coughs> really well right What's that? Working out really well right now. Oh. There was a very interesting presentation given at the library a couple of years back yeah. on this. Uh, by well, there's a barn on there's a barn on Lancaster Ave. <laughs> What's that? There's a barn on Lancaster Ave. They did that. They they lifted it and they built a floor underneath. It. Yeah. If you want to see trees from the 1700s, they're in our basement holding the building up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the wiring is attached yeah. to. Yes. <laughs> it has the original Ben Franklin wiring system. <laughs> you kites. <laughs> Okay, so our last interview uh, of the evening is from Landscape Architectural and Engineering Services um, and represented by Elena Pascarella, is that correct? Yep. Okay. Land Design Collaborative. Land Design Collaborative, okay. Yep. Oh, there it is, okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, my name is Elena Pascarella, I'm a licensed landscape architect. Uh, based in Rhode Island, and I'm going to be working with Diane Soule, who wasn't able to attend this evening. Uh, about a couple of years ago, we had a synergy. We were working on a number of projects together, so we decided to uh, pool our resources into a collaborative. Um, and we're both licensed in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Um, and we've worked on, well, Diane has 30, over 30 years of experience. I, I'm getting on close to 40 years of experience. I get a little uncomfortable when I <laughs> when I look at that number. But um, uh, no, um, we both enjoy our work, and um, you have the the front slide that shows our team, and we also have uh, Greg Roy on our team from Dillison Roy. Um, I've worked on a number of projects with Dillison Roy. Well, actually, when it was Ducharme and Dillison, now Dillison Roy. Uh, working in conjunction with Tuck and Tuck Architects on a number of projects in the Stowe and Bolton area. So I am familiar with this area. Um, and I also, um, as you can see from the three projects that we put on that first slide, uh, illustrating prior experience, I've worked on public projects as well here in Massachusetts. Um, and one which is fairly close by, the Concord Bell Memorial, although it's a small site, um, we took one corner of that very visible main street in downtown Concord and worked very closely with the town of Concord and the Concord Rotary um, through funding under a Community Preservation Act. And we, we renovated this, this one corner, redesigned uh, and refurbished that one corner so that they could take the bell from the USS Concord that was in the uh, basement of their town hall and uh, put it on a, on a fitting memorial um, in, in that memorial square. So it's, it's right in, it, this corner was kind of run down, the pavement was pulling up, they had a busted light, a couple of busted benches. Um, it was really an unattractive piece in that, in that main street area of Concord. And so we took that through, through the design process, um, working with various groups in the town, public works, engineering, the Rotary, um, who were the primary stakeholders, and um, uh, developed a design that everyone approved of, and then we put together construction documents construction cost estimates and then construction documents that went out to bid and we did some construction oversight and they had the memorial dedication on Veterans Day, I think it was two or three years ago now that they did that. Uh, they're still adding a few pieces in the back but um, we met all their goals and they were very happy with it so it's certainly a, a reference uh, for you. On a larger scale projects that would be more in line with, with the size of the site that um, you have here. We've included a couple of projects in our proposal, one for Carousel Park in East Providence where uh, Diane worked very closely with uh, the town of East Providence, Rhode Island. That was a few acres, taking it from a concept design through a number of stakeholder meetings and community meetings developing a master plan and developing um, construction documents for that. 
Um, Diane and I worked together on this marina and fast ferry facility for uh, the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management. Um, that was a small site that is an existing uh, fast ferry. It, it's a ferry that takes people down to uh, Newport, Rhode Island and back. Um, the key components were this were addressing stormwater in a very natural way. We had to provide, with the engineers that we were working with, we had to provide a certain amount of parking for peak season when that ferry is utilized quite a bit. But we also, because Rhode Island, like Massachusetts, has very um, stringent stormwater regulations that, that you need to address the stormwater as much as possible at the point source and doing it in as natural a way as possible, whether it's through vegetation, bioswales, uh, or whatever. Um, and so that, uh, again, this was just a master plan that we did. They're still working on getting the funding for it, but we worked on a master plan with a number of visuals, as you can see, uh, plan visuals and also renderings, so that um, the Department of Environmental Management would have uh, a lot of graphic information to then apply for grant funding to actually get, get the project built. And I presume that that's the situation that you'll be in with this project. You may want to go for a Community Deve uh, Preservation Act grant or some other sort of funding to, to begin to implement different phases of construction. And so the visuals are going to be, be an important part of what we would provide as part of the design concept. And, and then just as an example on a project that I worked on, again, this was in Rhode Island, but it's in Woonsocket, just over the Massachusetts line, uh, World War II Memorial Park, which was a state park, and there were a lot of stakeholders involved with this because we were designed, our client was the state of Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management, but we were designing for the city of Woonsocket because the DEM had made an agreement with the city to redo the park and then hand it over to the city and also give them a $250,000 a year budget to maintain the park for the first five years. Um, and this has basically become a regional facility. It not only services Woonsocket, but a lot of the communities surrounding that area because of the splash park, the playground, uh, additional tennis courts, and a regulations um, uh, competition level Little League field. So they, they now actually can hold uh, Little League tournaments, which they do. They have regional tournaments every year. Um, so just an example of the different size and scale of projects that both myself and Diane have, have worked on over the years that, that we've been um, practicing as landscape architects, working as landscape architects. Um, the next sheet showing our project approach, um, it, this is task one that we outlined in our proposal, research, site analysis, and developing de design ideas. Um, this was a very rural park in nor northern uh, Rhode Island in the community of Barville, which is a small community on the idea of Lunenburg. Um, and they had an area around this site called Duck Pond, and they wanted to develop a series of trails around it. And so we went out and walked the site, again, with the DPW people, um, town selectmen, did a walk during the day, um, got their feedback um, in terms of what site elements they liked, what they wanted to see. They wanted a very low-key development, nothing as... Um, um, shall I say elaborate as what you're considering. You want a, a, a shelter, you want a farmer's market, you, you want something that's a little more um, active. Um, this was really much more of a passive design idea um, because they wanted to really maintain that rural character. They wanted to keep it quiet for fishermen, for hikers, for people who just wanted to go picnic for the day. Um, um, but we did have to look into options for getting vehicular access in there, providing parking. This, this site was somewhat off the beaten track, not as close to, to the center of town as yours is. 
And so we walked the site with them. We put together a detailed site analysis. Those numbers that you see on that map correlate to photographs that we had assembled and, and did sort of a mini written report uh, in terms of our thoughts about what could happen at the various locations along, um, along or around the pond and along the site. Um, and then the next slide on the project approach, if we could have that one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, that shows uh, one of our suggested concepts for the trail uh, features in terms of where we might have picnicking and fishing, trailheads, um, you know, things w such as eroded banks that we need to, needed to address, um, what natural features could be assets, what natural features needed to be um, mitigated, thing, the erosion and things of that sort. Um, and we did two conceptual concepts for them with estimates of probable construction cost and presented our ideas uh, to the town at a public meeting. Um, and then from that, in, we prepared a written report for them and we would be doing the same for you as you had outlined, as we had outlined in our proposal and as you had requested. So I know you wanted to limit it to 10 minutes and I'll do that and open it up to questions. Okay, Mr. Marino. I don't have any questions. Mr. Dwyer. Uh, I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Franco. I'm going to ask you the same question I asked the others. Um, uh, as you know, there may be interest in preserving some aspect of that old primary school mm -hmm. building uh, in, in whatever, you know, whatever form is not determined yet, if at all. Uh, do you have any experience or um, samples of work where you've incorporated or preserved portions of a building? Um, well, the Carousel Park project that Diane had worked on, there is an historic, it's a wood frame structure, it's an historic Louf carousel, Louf, L-O-U-F-F, was one of the well-known um, designers for for those old carousels. I, I don't know if you have any here in Massachusetts, but we had it's a sore subject. You don't want to mention we oh. we yes we you had, had one. one and you got rid of it. Uh oh. Yes. Um, well, yeah, and we we still have a few in in Rhode Island. Uh, although I think there was one that someone in the city of Warwick, where I am, they had one and they got rid of it. So yeah, it's it's a sore subject for a lot of communities, not just here. But yes, we've you know we've incorporated um, historic structures into projects. Um, it would entail having reviewing the Vertex uh, report again and and probably consulting with them to see which components of that building could could remain. If anything, you know, do you do you leave just outside walls, and you know, put a diff, you know, leave it open, or do you put a, a, a some type of a roof structure over the top of it? Um, you know, it's a multi-story building. I again, I we'd have to review the the vertex report in more detail and and see what could potentially mm -hmm. remain. Um, it's sort of in an ideal location. If you left some of those walls, it would help to buffer some of those abutters that are nearby from, uh, you know, kind of masks, some of, some of the noises, shall we say, that might happen at the park at night if you have um, outdoor concerts and, and things of that sort, uh, you know, outdoor activities. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Jeffries. Yeah, how, <clears throat> um, thank you very much for coming tonight. Yeah. I do appreciate the presentation. Um, how big is the collaborative? You mentioned you and Diana. Do you have other employees? Um, I have an individual who works um, part time. Uh, he has a um, he's a certified um, horticulturalist, and he also has a contractor's license. So he does a lot of um, our construction, my construction uh, oversight work because he and he does review drawings as well because of his contractor background. So making recommendations for, let's say, better ways to um, design something or put it together so that it's um, more constructible, more financially constructible, if you will. Um, okay. So we do, yep. 
All right, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little about the balance. Talk to me a little about the balance of the creativity of being a landscape architect and, and then against the restraints that a site provides, whether it has a structure like this case or not, or the you know the, the, the environmental concerns and, and how you work in that environment. It, that's the design process. I mean, it's it's a it's a process of give and take all the time. You, you know, you just you do a site analysis for a project, and you see a certain number of things, and you make note, and then you begin to get into the conceptual design, and you start scratching your head a little bit and say, well, wait a minute, let's let's go back and take take a look at that area or those photos, and. Um, how can this come into play? You know, if it's a low point, um, can you create a rain garden that's that's really attractive, uh, and at the same time addresses stormwater management uh, in a in a natural way? Um, so it, it's just a back and forth. Diane and I were at a meeting today because we've. Uh, we're involved in a project, again, in Rhode Island um, at an historic park that was designed by Olmsted Brothers. And um, it's a beachfront site that um, our coastal areas are, are losing their shorelines. I mean, and we're looking at climate change and sea level rise, and we're trying to address for the Department of Environmental Management how to enhance this beachfront and think 30 years down the road when storm surge levels will be 10 feet higher than what they are now. And so that's exactly what we were doing, looking at the engineering and looking at the environmental components and an historic carousel build, shell of an historic carousel building that we need to keep intact. And how do we do that? How do we go about doing that? Again, we're still in conceptual design process, but a lot of tracing paper and overlays and, um, you know, putting putting different ideas down, and weighing it with other team members to come up with the best solution, and then of course you develop the two or three best, and you present those ideas to to your public, to your stakeholders, um, and give them the rationale behind why you've you've taken this approach, and then get their their input from there, and see see how people respond to that. On the the project that had the carousel. Was it a prerequisite going into the project that the town wanted to keep it? Okay, oh, yeah. so that was, okay. Uh, uh, so it was not, okay, oh, yeah. we don't know what we want to do with it. They no, were no, very no. certain that, they wanted that to That was, it. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the same one that we're working on now, uh, this, this state park. I mean, uh, you have historic uh, preservation. You have uh, Massachusetts Historical Society, you know, Commission that you have to review things with. Um, and we have the, a state historic preservation office that, has jurisdiction over buildings that are, are historic and, you know, they will have a say in, I'm sure, as here in Massachusetts in terms of what what happens. That school is historic, yes? It is. Is it on the National Register? Or? No. 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 I mean, historic, I guess, is a tricky word. When you say, is it historic? It, uh, well, how old? It's um, over the 50. 20s. 20s, yeah. yeah. All right, so it's I don't know 50. the exact date, but it's in the 20s. Yeah. 1920s. No. I mean, there, there are a lot of elements that come into play, you know, it, what's the historic integrity of it, you know, what's the significance of it, it's... Right, that's what I mean, so, but it's not, it's not on any historic register. Yeah, right. it's not an historic district, so there, yeah. I don't know, is it in a historic, it, it, it is, is a historic is it, district. Because it's not in this historic district. Like the building the is town, not on the, the historic town. register. National Register District here in yes. downtown, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but it's, the right, building itself is not on the national on the national register. register. So there, there will be some some input regarding that. And I mean, um, yeah, it, it, that would be that would be something we'd have to investigate further. And we would, you know, contact uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission and see what what their take is on it. Those are the kinds of things you do early on. That that's what we're looking into in, in this project in, in Rhode Island that we're covering. Currently. We have a local. Obviously, a, and you have a, a local appointed historical commission too. Yeah, so. as well. So, the, and that building is in another. It's in a special district in the town, so okay. it, it does fall within an architectural preservation district. 
So yeah, so there are a number of factors that, yes. that, that would have to be weighed in terms of what happens with the building, how much of it remains, does it all go away? I, I, you know, cost, um, can you keep certain uh, portions of it standing and not have it be a li you know, a liability? Obviously, we'd have to, you know, look into the securing things structurally sure. and, and that sort of thing. So, so if, if you had to put in the shortest possible, you know, in a couple of sentences after all this, if you boil down your whole proposal and your, all your history, why, like, what is the, is the one thing, the one quality that your collaborative has that would make you right for this job without, I mean, again, without rehashing all of this, but okay. in your mind, the absolute strengths. Um, I, I think you have uh, two heads, Diane and, my, and mine, um, and we have a lot of experience doing park projects uh, of this sort, and we really enjoy doing it, these types of projects and helping communities uh, create usable community spaces from from kind of a tabula rasa, if you will, because I mean, it is, it's kind of a clean slate. So. One last question. You, and I don't know that it was 100% clear, so you and your partner have a collaborative. Do you each no. work individually as well? Um, we do, uh, okay. yeah. On, we're, we're kind of merging slowly, shall we say. So how do you choose which ones you're going to do collaboratively and which ones you're going to do individually? Um, those that um, seem to be of interest to both of us, yeah. Okay. So, yep. Okay. Do you have any questions? I do not. Thank you. Right. I want to thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank and you for you. Uh, inviting time us, presenting here. inviting me. And thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. So have we left time to discuss this here. Is it your intent that we would discuss this this evening? Um, as far as um, next steps. Yeah. Well, as far as what we're going to do, we don't have a meeting next week. Right. So um, as far as next steps, the board would, as part of the RFP process, the interview was part of the rating right. process. So that would get. In the process. Um, that would, after that, all the ratings are in. Um, then we would open price proposals and weigh the two, price and non-price proposals. Well, I guess my I guess my my real question, my bottom line question is, when's the earliest that we can make a determination who we're going to go with? November second. Okay. All right. So there's no discussion tonight about these. We mm -hmm. all get to weigh this, and you did the reference checks. Julie did. Julie yes. did, and so mm -hmm. they're part of the score. You're going to yep. prevent. You're going to provide the score, that the, the combined. Yes, score. I'll just need the scoring from the interviews for tonight. Ah, okay. So everybody, if you could, and that's on a scale of again zero to four. One to four. One to four. So if everybody can, mm -hmm. and one being. Oops. Unacceptable. One, okay, so one being the lowest, four being the highest. Please provide in an email or at the end of the meeting if you want. Just tell the town manager just so we know how you scored each of them. Any questions about that process? No. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, interviews. We have a resignation of a reserve officer, Aaron Morreale. Can we actually um, put Mr. Bernie? We can put Mr. Bernie anywhere <laughs> Mr. Bernie would like to be. Where, do you, where are we going well, he's to? Here for a f a f <laughs> he's here for a few items. He's here for the Vote on the 2020 re-precincting plan from the okay, town Okay, current Clark, business. Traffic count and... All right, well, let's take them one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Vote on the 2020 re-precincting plan from the town clerk. Mr. Bernie, good evening. Good evening. I brought visual aids. All right, <laughs> I like it. So I'll hide myself and, and you can see this. Uh, the top map here is our existing precincting map. The lower map is the proposed uh, revisions uh, using the uh, 2020 numbers. Census. Uh, I ask you why the top one is a draft then, if that's what we're working under, and the bottom one is not a draft? You know what? Then it's backwards. The bottom one is the existing one. You know how I can tell? Let me find where I am. <laughs> 
I said we can put you wherever you want. So. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It's funny because I always vote in C and I'm in D on both of these. So. <laughs> So the bottom, the, yeah. So this is the this is our existing map, okay. and it's draft because that's what the census sent to us and said, "Here's your map," and it includes this fun tabulation of where the population is. Okay. And what their goal is, as always, is to have things be as uh, roughly equivalent as possible. So this map on the top creates a situation here where this is the largest district in A, or the largest precinct. Um, we're using nomenclature I'm not used to, so I'm going to fumble all over it. And that's the area where we have a proposed massive population influx in the Howard Street project. So in looking at it with the town clerk and sort of kicking it back and forth, adjusting the precincts to be more equivalent takes the possibility of this district growing even larger than the other three uh, and spreads that into a, a more equitable distribution through the precincts. Do we do anything by precinct? We don't. So what, why the importance of making them equal since everything we do is townwide, every vote? That our instructions from the Census Bureau were they should be as equivalent as possible without much variance beyond several percentage points. Okay. Okay. May I ask a new question? Yeah, of course you may. Um, <laughs> I thought there could be an eventual possibility to, as the town grew exponentially, that there could be two voting centers. Uh, there could be. Uh, and I believe that's distinctly I mean, up to the places? polling. Yeah. Polling okay. places. That but still wouldn't. That's. I mean, yes, I I could see that happening, mm -hmm. but I don't think that still, unless we're going to divide votes by precinct, it still wouldn't change. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone explain other than whatever the reasoning is that the Census Bureau has. Correct, um, and you know, I, I also think that that's a, a town decision. I know that there are some larger communities that all poll at one individual location. Um, I think also the idea is to, decade by decade, try and keep things as even as possible in the eventuality that the form of government were to change and you were in a place where you were doing uh, counselors by geography. You'd be and, prepared. Correct. Okay, fair enough. My personal favorite about this is that they have inexplicably changed all the colors from one to another <laughs> and so making it I, I absolutely <laughs> impossible to follow uh, but anyway i mean so what what is our role in this i mean do, it, 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 not that i have any reason you, to you, to uh to what do you call it you, you, have, to, it, you, have, to, you have to sign the descriptions of the precincts okay as the chief elected officials and nothing i mean from from the at least visually I guess on the fringes there's some roads that probably change. Yeah, you know, it's like gonna, I see that it's going to change what, is, what line some people get in. What is the they, what is the northeast corner of the town on the east side of, of Hickory Hills? What precinct is that? Uh, so the, this that is one D. D. So I see D has been pushed westward on the northern part of That's Hickory correct. Hills. That's correct. Because this I is feel like I'm looking at okay, what what are the six differences between these two <laughs> pictures? <laughs> Because uh, this is a more <laughs> dense developed area, it's, right. and they don't. the The challenge to this is you can't just say, "Okay, we're going to take these this neighborhood." You have to take an entire census tract. Okay. So it's it's shifting things in predefined blocks. It's it's like a really high level game of Tetris because you're not only going with shape, you're going with content. And I see that. Uh I guess the Whalem district, what, which one is that? The, B, the, the, uh, B the has, red? Has yeah, so that one, that one is really encroached into, into D. Correct, and, and C has, has shifted a little bit um, around through here. You'll see this line. Yeah, it's a little bit, not much. It's a little bit, it's a much, little bit wonkier, but yeah. not, not too right. much. I mean, anybody have any questions for Mr. Bernie? No questions. 
Thank uh, you. I would entertain a motion. Do we, we need a vote, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yes, it even says vote. Maybe I should read that. Uh, entertain a motion on accepting the re-precincting plan from the town clerk as presented by Mr. Bernie. I move to accept the 2020 re-precincting -pre -pre re -pre <laughs> plan from the town clerk and Mr. Bernie. I have a second. <clears throat> second. Well, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. Thank you. Traffic count requests. Uh, so the town, through the MPO and the Montreux Regional Planning Commission, is afforded the opportunity to make requests for traffic counting in areas that the Montreux Regional Planning Commission and the MPO, uh, or the Metropolitan Planning Organization, who uh, diverts, diverts. Uh, uses federal funds to to do uh, traffic traffic analysis i guess they do divert them but it's not really in that nefarious way um and so they have a four-year program where they count predetermined places every four years uh these tend to be major roads lancaster lemonster lemonster shirley road uh mass ave uh, but every year we're permitted to make requests for up to four additional locations. Uh, the planning board has asked that I submit requests to have the Howard Street area counted, both east and west of the proposed uh, Pondview Commons site, as well as south of Howard Street on both towns, uh, West Townsend Road and New West Townsend Road uh, in order to create a baseline uh, traffic for the existing condition uh, in the eventuality that uh, it is looked at as a development site. We have uh, existing numbers that are not reliant on the developers, traffic engineers. When would these studies be done? No, well, within if if and when they they agree to do them when when they have the opportunity they could be done. Oh, okay, so it's not we're not we're submitting something that may happen. Yeah, we're submitting point. a request. Okay, gotcha. if they have the time, the staff, and and the equipment. Gotcha. Okay. Um, generally, they, I mean, they could be done in time between now and when the snow flies, or uh, in the spring. Okay. Anybody that that was are you, are you, was that a unanimous vote of the planning board? By the way, yes, it was. That's at least a, of the members that were there. You know, the time, there's a lot of variables when they do those traffic counts. You realize that, right? Yes, there is. And those, that equipment they use is not that reliable. I can tell you that. In 48 hours is definitely not enough time. No, it's, it's not. I argued it, that with them for years. <laughs> it, it unfortunately is not the ideal situation, but it at least provides a place to begin. I don't think so. Well, if anything, I would say that we don't want to traffic study done for that area in the winter months because that's when most people are likely to not be driving we want people we want to get the counts when people are driving but then you look at the summer and people are invariably here and not here and you're not dealing with school traffic some parents aren't working as much so you know time of year is is important uh, yeah i wouldn't do it in the summer either i would do it in the fall or the spring personally. and that's generally when they do a okay. lot of their counting Anybody have any questions for Mr. Bernie on this? Yeah, I do. Mr. Um, Jeffries. Out of curiosity, and I don't know, this is to the town manager, um, is this normally something that comes before us, or is it something that you normally would approve? It's been a while since I think any. I was going to say it's been yeah. probably two plus years since we've made any requests. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think the last ones were approved by the select board. Okay. I think it may have been early 2019, so at least two full years. I have no questions. I'm fine with those studies. I think they reasonable basis for wanting them. I am as well. Okay. All right. So uh, do you need a vote of this? You need a vote for sure. this? All right. I, mean, so, I, need, uh, a, I need a signature of our chief elected official. So if that requires oh, okay, well, a vote, then absolutely. Entertain a motion regarding the request from the planning board for the traffic counts on the roads uh, described by Mr. Bernie. 
I move we approve the traffic count requests from the planning board uh, at the location described by Mr. Burning. Or a second. A second. Uh, well, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Anyway. <laughs> I appreciate your support. <laughs> uh, is there any other items? Yes, okay. the four planning board articles. I was going to ask you about that. Okay, four, four planning board articles. Uh, would you like me to give you the quick rundown? Yes, sure. sure. Yeah. So, so hold on. Let's. Uh, have we have we gone to numbers? Or are we still? Yes, we're, we should have numbers now. Okay. Well. No. We have one article that um, was requested to be withdrawn. Well, we can leave a hole so, if we want. So the numbers. Okay. Well, change. the numbers will change. Okay. Sorry. Well, then I'll use letters because I. No, have, no, no, no. I, I gonna, don't have numbers. We're here. gonna. We'll use the numbers from what we have here. Okay. Let's put it that way. Uh, special meeting information. Draft articles. Okay, so yours are on our sheets for tonight only, but they will be moved, are Articles 16, 17, 18, and 19. As long as I can start with the right number. So 16. That's the one about I'm type of districts. I'm going to refer as the types of districts, yes. yes. So uh, as you probably all remember, six years ago we adopted the Village Center District. And four years ago, we deleted the retail commercial district. Somehow that never translated into uh, section 3.1 of chapter 250. So this article is intended to strike retail commercial district, which we no longer have, and insert village center district, which we do have. So overall, you would consider this a housekeeping? That is correct. OK. OK. Uh, uh, well. Not all, I guess you can make an argument that not all of them are. All right, well, let's take them one at a time. So 17. The Water Supply Protection District. That is correct. Um, we received a request from the Water District to amend their water supply protection map. Uh, they recently amended their withdrawal permit with the DEP, and in doing so, they remapped their underground aquifer. In doing so, it created a, I'm going to call it a tumor because that's kind of what it is. It's like a little bump on the west side of the line uh, on Lancaster Ave in the general vicinity of their well fields. So in order to meet their requirement, they needed to make a request that the town adopt this new map. Planning board looked at it and said, well, this makes sense. So this is an amendment to the district because it adds a small portion of land to the zone three within the residential district. Uh, doesn't necessarily drastically change what could be done there and that area is generally um, already developed with houses and, and uses. Uh, so this And it's is, identified by the water district as the aquifer protection zone. That's so correct. we're just referencing it as part of our protection district. Yes. I mean, if we did not adopt this alteration, we would only protect the water supply protection, the aquifer districts as they exist in the existing. Right. Map. So there would be a piece that would not Correct. be that protected. Would, yes. It would be probably a good idea for us to protect all. One would, one would agree with that. Okay. Um, so this just takes out the previous map reference and inserts the new map reference. And presumably they, you will have or they will have provided two uh, maps? Yes, I did provide it with the... Um, Both maps, the current, the the current one and the one proposed. Hopefully, yes, I can I can get the yes. the current one. Okay. Uh, and then, well, please, anybody on the board, if you have questions or any of these, otherwise we're just going to keep going. Location of districts. So this is housekeeping that mirrors the previous article. So by adopting the new water supply protection district, we alter our zoning map, and thus we need to adopt a new zoning map. And, and that's what this does. It would, it would change the date of the zoning map to the date of town meeting that it's adopted, and it would alter the outline of the Water Supply Protection District to show the new boundaries. What's, what's the impact on homes? Uh, on existing homes? Yeah, that are now going to be in this area. They're... Uh, I would have to look at the bylaw. I don't think there's a major impact. There might be like a lot coverage requirement, um, but it's it's for residential. It's probably not 
at a point where uh, the majority of homes would run into an impact. Uh, generally, when you see lot coverage on something like this, it's 50% or up in that range. And on a 40,000 square foot lot, which is our base lot size, and in that area, most of the lots are that size or larger, um, having 20,000 square feet of, of structure is gonna be you know, pretty, pretty high. Okay. So I can I can look into that and I can I can reach out with an answer. Okay, and nineteen is lot area. So uh, the planning board recently has had occasion to review several plans and uh, proposals within the limited business residential district. Uh, one of those being an A and R plan, and in that process, um, it was realize that there's no lot size or frontage requirements that exist anywhere in the bylaw for the limited business residential. Uh, so the planning board felt that that was something we should correct, which makes sense. And um, the retail commercial happens to still be hanging around in that table. So uh, in order to uh, correct that, we're looking at deleting retail commercial and replacing it with limited business residential lot size is staying at 40,000, which is again, our minimum lot size in, in every other district, uh, except uh, the residents being the outlying, those are 80,000. Uh, but limited business residential is essentially the area from the edge of the village district down to the Chase Road intersection with Mass Ave. It's a district that's only several hundred feet deep, uh, mainly comp composed of existing dwellings and businesses. Uh, so this will only have impact as it goes to people either dividing or re redeveloping lots. Uh, keeping the uh, 100 foot of frontage, which is in all of our districts except the industrial, uh, and actually reducing the lot width to 100 uh, because this area has a fair amount of narrower lots uh, and this would allow for the lots to remain rectangular as opposed to sort of pie shaped or like a Tetris piece where they have the 100 feet of frontage and then you have to find an extra 75 feet of width to create a building. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions about that? No. No. I think that's fine. This is the last one of the evening so make this a big fanfare. This should be a great presentation for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully everyone will be uh, ready to leave by then. Well, certainly after it, everybody will be ready to leave. Well, ho hopefully they're not ready to leave before. <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, no, these are all, anybody have any questions for Mr. Bernie before? Is that all? Is there any other issues for Mr. Bernie? No. All right. Always glad to take At you out of turn. Here, right? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks so, so much, Adam. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a That's nice night. Thank you, you Adam. Too. Thank you. Anybody else we need to take out of order? Or can we? No. Okay, so resignation of Reserve Officer Aaron Morreale, or Morial. Yes, I was notified by Chief Gamal that um, Reserve Officer Aaron Morreale um, was resigning and her schedule um, was so that she couldn't commit the time for the department because she's um, a full-time police officer for the Fitchburg State University. Oh, already? As, okay. Yeah, right. and recently began a comfort dog program for them as well. All right. So. Well, give her our thanks for her service here in town. Resignation of uh, PAC videographer Scott Finnegan. Yes, and uh, Scott recently um, found another job opportunity so he has left employment with Greenberg. Okay. Again, I uh, thank him for his service. I know he, he covered a lot of things for PAC and, yes. and did a very good job. So thank you, Scott. Yeah. Town manager report. All right, I'll start with the announcement of existing vacancies on boards and committees. There are two vacancies on the Architectural Preservation His uh, District Commission, two vacancies on the Commissioner of Trust Funds, multiple vacancies on the Economic Development Committee, one regular member vacancy and two associate vacancies on the Green Communities Committee, 
one vacancy on the personnel committee and one associate vacancy on the zoning board of appeals anyone interested in serving on these commissions or boards can fill out a application form that can be found on our town website and return them to the select board's office employment opportunities with the town we currently have an assistant accountant position part-time benefited position a board committee clerk position part-time non-benefited digital services staff librarian which is a part-time benefited position assistant to the sewer business manager which is a part-time um, and to be voted on to be benefited position at the special town meeting and multiple um, sorry couple public access videographer positions which are part-time non-benefited positions and the trash and recycling coordinator position which is a grant funded part-time non-benefited position and information on all those positions can be found on the town website as well under employment opportunities update on grants our new IT consultant Sousa IT provided all the materials and written justification required to submit the community compact IT grant and I submitted the application last Wednesday for a total request for both school and town network infrastructure equipment in the amount of 188,000 anticipate the grant announcements will be made around the end of November in regards to bids, we have uh, a couple updates. The master plan bid process for the planning board has been put on hold after they received zero bids in August. After contacting the firms that took out the uh, invitation for bids, firms said the existing allocation would not provide adequate funding for the production of the two elements sought under the bid of the eight that are required of a master plan. The planning board has submitted a capital request for additional funds that would complete the entire master plan for, and that was submitted for the upcoming capital planning process, so for fiscal 23. The land use director's research has indicated that when communities hire firms to complete the entire plan, the cost becomes more manageable due to the fact that the majority of the work is data collection and public input, and that is used throughout the plan. The same amount of data collection is required for one or eight elements. The Marshall Park RFP is due Wednesday, November 3rd. And that's all the updates on bids. Information regarding Unitel's proposed rate increase. Unitel filed an amendment to their original proposed winter basic service rate increase, which was uh, effective December 1st, 2021, and goes until May 31st 2022 with the DPU last week that would split their total proposed increase between the winter rate and summer 2022 rate comments to DPU were due by yesterday at 5 p.m. I submitted a brief comment letter in opposition of the proposed rate increase restating the impact that it would have on our residents that our basic service ratepayers under UNITIL and that even splitting this increase between the winter and summer rates would be detrimental for many people that are already on fixed incomes. It also expressed that there was insufficient time allowed for those wishing to comment, submit comments between the notice and the deadline for comments to DPU. I'm currently working with our municipal aggregation power broker on contacting all the eligible accounts about their ability to opt into the municipal aggregation program that is 11.21 cents per kilowatt. Hour. <clears throat> uh, COVID-19 update. <clears throat> the weekly update from the Board of Health and the total number of new cases reported as of October 9th was 58. And the current positivity rate for Lunenburg as of October, so this should be 9th, was 5.35%. And Halloween hours have already been announced beginning of the meeting, but they were Sunday, October 31st, 6 to 8 p.m. And the special town meeting is Tuesday, November 16th at 7 p.m. at the middle school, high school auditorium. Questions for the town manager on the report? No. So there's a slight decline in the COVID cases? Yes. Uh, yeah, the, from, I think it last yes. week was. Slight decline in the cases and a yeah. decline in the positivity rate, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to answer, because I, I saw the people on social media and around were questioning, 
whether the board of select the select board would actually file a comment during the comment period for Unitil. At the time that it was given, we were notified on last Monday, and the comments had to be in by yesterday. So there was not any time to have, unless we called an emergency meeting to draft the letter. So there's no official select board letter. Uh, I don't know if anybody here on the board submitted a personal one, but that's why there's no official letter. I did uh, talk with the town manager, and as she said, she put in uh, her comment in opposition. But I will say that if the DPU, when and if the DPU has hearings in the district about this, I w we will let people know, and then people can attend those, because I've attended many of those rate increase hearings and other kinds of hearings the DPU holds in the district. A lot of times they'll hold them in Fitchburg. So uh, we'll keep people posted on that. But just to answer that one question for information I got. Okay. Uh, letters of support, old business. Letters of support regarding House Bill 130 and Senate Bill 2200 on the streaming video over public rights of way that was presented to us uh, by Steve Walker, who is the chair of the, the PAC committee. Does anybody have any questions about anything that was presented or the, the request from PAC or the legislation itself? Oh. I don't have any questions. I have a comment. Okay. So looking through um, what the the impact of this, as, to, as explained last week, uh, the impact of this is that there will be a 5% a, um, of the streaming costs um, are basically being, there's a 5% tax. Uh, the way that it reads is that um, 10% of that goes towards the state's general coffers. That another, um, I think, well, let me get that right. One fifth of that goes towards the state's general coffers. So that's 20%. Uh, two fifths of it, or something along those lines, uh, yeah, two fifths of it goes into um, a fund that's going to give money back to municipalities. And then the last two fifths of it, the impact, uh, that would also be going to this fund. And there was a specific verbiage here. Uh, that I'm guessing it is referred to PACs basically, but that will go to these local access channels and be distributed by population. So I, I'm not in favor of this. Um, I understand what PACs presentation was about, what they're trying to do. I think the impact of this is that there will be a 5% tax on everyone's bills because Comcast, in my opinion, isn't going to lose a penny. So everyone gets a 5% tax on their streaming service bill and the town gets back some proportion of that on a based on population which when we think about what our population is compared to uh, larger areas cities and such you know i don't see that as being very equitable uh, i also understand that some cities have you know public wi-fi and so there's plenty of places around the commonwealth um, and there's also competition in terms of uh, who you can have for uh, internet providers, whereas we have one option. So I think the impact of this is that certain areas around the state, such as the cities where they can have Verizon or they can have Comcast, they can have multiple options, uh, or they have a public utility, uh, and so they don't pay anything. And then, so our citizens get a 5% tax, and we'll be lucky, in my opinion, if we get 1% of that back. So I don't support general money going to the i think that the state can raise money by raising taxes if they so choose but i think this is just a creative way to get more money so i'm a no anybody else so with the historical decrease of people on on cable services and the increase in people going to streaming services uh, and uh, the reliance on most municipalities on public broadcast, in fact, an increased presence on public broadcast over the three potential channels, uh, of which we have all three in Lunenburg Public, public access, um, educational, and government. They were funded uh, uh, in a way through cable, because when this all started, when the, ca the, the Telecommunications Act of, I think, 1974 did that, or 1973, that's how these things were funded. But now here we are 50 years later, 
and the funding mechanism is changing because people's uses are changing because the internet was never, well, there was no internet in 1973 of any public use at least. And now, of course, it's ubiquitous and everybody carries multiple devices that have internet connectivity. And if we're gonna continue to be able to support uh, cable, it makes sense to me that streaming video is kind of replacing cable video. I think that is a natural progression for myself. And I don't agree with certainly the numbers that Mr. Jeffries has. Certainly we'll have some rate increase. It's, it's hard to know what, but I want the legislation to go forward and there'll be plenty of hearings by all interested parties, uh, the companies themselves, the streaming companies themselves and residents themselves, et cetera. But I think it provides a natural replacement to keep funding to public access channels. So I am in favor of this and would like to uh, have us sign it in support of the two legislations. Anybody else want to weigh in? Sure. Uh, personally, uh, I agree with Chairman Alonzo on this one. Um, I think uh, prior to you know getting involved in town politics, I, I didn't realize how many people actually uh, watch and, and, and follow these public meetings and not just on our board but on all the, all the boards in town. And I, I agree that it's changing and I, I could foresee you know streaming become the norm in, in cable uh, you know being phased out in the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, and with that, you know, I think this is a reasonable way to, to maintain a, a mechanism for funding some of that public access that, that is valued in town. So I, I'd be willing to sign a letter of support. Anybody else? So I would entertain a motion on us signing this, uh, in signing these letters in, in support as requested by PAC. I move we sign letters uh, regarding House Bill 130 and Senate Bill uh, 2200 on streaming video over public rights away in support of PAC. Do I have a second? Second. second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Four to one, it passes. It's asked me to, uh, Chairman, Chairman. I'll have Elaine redo that. Okay, mm -hmm. and then I will sign them. <laughs> okay. Uh, list of budget priorities to provide legislators for FY22 state supplemental budget bill. Madam Town Manager. So, <clears throat> um, typically we put together a budget priority list for the next year's um, upcoming budget season for the state to consider for earmarks. So that discussion will occur closer to um, sometime in January. That's when our legislators are actually not, uh, weren't able to come in November um, as um, initially I had the discussion with them uh, last week uh, over Zoom requesting that they have a um, busy schedule right now with what's going on for bills and such. So, and they're requesting a January meeting with the board. So this request pertains to the state's supplemental budget bill, which closes around mid-November. So it, timing wise, um, we would wanna submit something um, now for that request um, in the hopes that it would get approved. Speaking with them about parameters as far as amounts, like it would, should be no more than 50,000. And I reviewed the, uh, our previous priority requests. They're well over that threshold, um, our projects. I reviewed the bond bill amounts. Um, the only one that uh, stands out was for 40,000 for the old primary school for a feasibility study and analysis. Um, possibly we could, um, you know, amend that to do the hazardous materials abatement. We had done that survey. So to make that as a request for um, the earmark for the state supplemental budget bill. 
do they indicate any feeling one way or another that they will be accepting supplemental earmark? No. Yeah, it's a request, right. and okay. we're, we're lucky if it makes it in. Right. Okay. But to be cognizant that, you know, our high end threshold would be fifty thousand. That would, you know, especially given that they're freshmen right. um, legislators. Have we looked also? I mean, does anything on the on the capital plan that we went over this earlier this evening with the capital planning committee? Any of that qualify? Or the project? Well, those are projects. Don't we have anything in there that we could possibly make a priority in the fiscal twenty three column? Yeah. Um. You know, there there could be, but we haven't vetted okay. a lot of those projects. And when do they need this by? As Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I would assume okay. because, yeah, if they're going to be voting, vote for November, okay. mid-November. Yeah, sooner the better. Well, but to me, hazardous waste removal is always a good thing. We're going to have to be faced with it at one point or another anyway. So. And there's still, you know, the opportunity for this fiscal 23 state budget to submit a list of earmarks when we have more time to um, review even the current capital projects that are our list. So we should probably put that on the list next week for the mm -hmm. capital planning committee to review and see, you know, looking, start looking at things that maybe we can mm -hmm. flag for the next year. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not this request. Yeah. I have no problem with putting that on if that's, if that's the only thing we have. That's the only thing I would identify as something that we've discussed that um, is it also a need for that property. Okay. Any questions? Sounds do you, good. Do you need a vote from us or you just need? Vote never hurts. Uh, vote never hurts. So do we do entertain a motion to put the? There is no. Yeah. There's no That's list. That's not the list. No. Mm -hmm. So this is, what would it be for? How much? For, I would say, request 50000 um, And with the ho hopes it would be, it may be less than that if we do get it. Okay, so I would move the, uh, entertain a motion that we provide to our legislators for their FY22 state supplemental budget bill, uh, $50,000 request for hazardous waste removal at Old, How does at the, the old primary? abatement? For, abatement um, yeah. for the old primary school. Right. Yes. Okay, so moved. Do it. I have a second. Second. Well, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. Okay, the second highlight of the evening. We go through. These are our recommendations, right? We have to yes. take votes on these things. Otherwise, our recommendations don't appear in the warrant. So, take a deep breath. <clears throat> Let's just go article by article, and we'll try to keep this moving. Do we have <coughs> actual numbers for Article 1? Yes, that's in your Google Drive. All right. And that is chart of changes to the budget? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so I can go through those. So um, the... Medicare town share portion, that budget the last couple of years has um, has not had sufficient funds in the budget because it's been level funded. So, but it's been covered by the group health insurance budget. So, I'm proposing to make that adjustment now, um, knowing excuse, that's the excuse me. Yes. May I ask for this to be shared uh, mm -hmm. on Zoom, and for those. Of Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Although we get the funny hunch, unless we zoom this up on Zoom, this is not going to be seen. So you, okay. you may want to magnify some of this. Yeah. TV is not a good way to share 12-point no. type so numbers. Yeah. Bottom, <laughs> bottom of the screen, right in the middle. I, I, I'm not watching it on TV, so I can't. I can't <laughs> well, it's tell. a full screen. It should be a full screen. Yeah. Right. Um, so the Medicare, like I said, that um, 
budget, there hasn't been sufficient funds um, because that budget has been level funded, but it has been covered at the end of the year with the group of health insurance. So proposing to make that adjustment now, knowing that's the projected amount needed for that line item. And that um, the group health insurance would cover that cost transfer out of that line is um, well as covering some an additional amounts needed. The town accountant line that's for the assistant accountant to increase the hours from 24 to 32, as our um, principal account clerk is retiring, and this the opportunity to transition to what's needed for um, that role in the future for succession planning and um, in the event the finance director or town accountant is out. The technology director is actually, it's not the technology director, it's the technology budget that's, um, okay. <laughs> yes, so um, that amount covers uh, the two grants that we've applied for, the $10,000 Maya grant for the Microsoft Office 365 in the event we don't receive that grant, as well as the town's portion for the Community Compact Network Infrastructure Grant, um, which we won't um, know about until the end of November, as well as um, the consultant's cost, which is uh, covered mostly by the remaining salary line for the IT director. Um, we needed approximately $3,000 um, more for that, to cover that cost. And lastly, the Money Tech assessment decrease, we received that notification and was forwarded mm -hmm. around by $21,159. So the overall um, omnibus impact is $31,540. The other changes to the budget, which um, play into the um, bottom line is revenues and expenses. On the expenditure side, the sewer enterprise um, is changing on the, the expenditure side by $5,360. The change in state assessments was an additional $122,551. We, the Article 2 is for prior year expense for $7,519.70. So the total expenditure adjustments is $156,250.70. Going down to the revenue adjustments, the change in sewer enterprise um, to, for their budget amendment article was an additional $10,824.31 from retained earnings. The cherry sheet uh, number um, decreased on the revenue side by $4,001. And we had a change in new growth for the positive for $149,664 for a total revenue adjustment of $156,487.51. So that leaves us a surplus of $236.81. All right. Anybody have any questions for the town manager on these adjustments? No. No. Nope. Okay. So these are the adjustments that are going to be made in reference to Article 1. So we will go through. Does anybody want to discuss Article 1? If not, no. I would entertain a motion. Now, our recommendations, there's three recommendations. We recommend approval, we recommend disapproval, or we defer to town meeting. Those are the three choices we have. So... I would entertain a motion on Article 1. Move to approve. Uh, as is. To recommend, a, recommend yeah, approval. Recommend approval. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. Article 2. So this is uh, probably your expenses. So we had that number. That number is... Seven thousand five hundred nineteen dollars. And what is it for again? There is it one just one bill? No, there were a total of four bills that um, were discovered recently by the uh, finance director for Tyler Technologies. They were IT bills. Okay. Okay. 
Entertain a motion regarding Article 2 for that amount. I move to recommend approval of Article 2. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. I'm not going to say discussion. If somebody has a discussion, jump in. Just trying to streamline this. Uh, are we ready? Do we have anything to vote on? Have they, has the firefighters? No, they have not um, given. So is it prudent to recommend approval if without their signature yet, or should we? I would defer. Okay. So we don't have the actual signed contract yet from the union, the firefighters union. So I would, uh, I would probably recommend, or I would move that we would defer that till town meeting till we have the number. Second. Not the number, but the agree signed agreement. Second. All, right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, the cent sewer enterprise fund transferring the amounts. So what is the amount? You put that in your other thing, right? I did. There was a revenue Ten. decrease and a um, retained earnings increase, and that would cover the cost of um, making the assistant to the sewer business manager a benefited position, moving from 19 hours to 24. So what was the total number? There is a chart within the Google Drive that shows oh, okay. the All right, let's look at that. sewer enterprise Just budget. Let's make sure that we see the numbers. Come on. All right, sewer enterprise budget amendment. So there it is. Okay. So did everybody see that chart? Yes. Any questions about it? All right, hearing none, then I would entertain a motion regarding Article 4. I move to recommend approval of Article 4. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. Number 5. See if the town will vote of available sums of $14,875.50 into the Sewer Capital Reserve Stabilization Fund. M move to recommend approval of Article 5. Second. And all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. All right. This one is being requested to be pulled, Article 6, because there are some logistics about how legally this is being implemented. So the Board of Assessors needs to do some more work behind the scenes, and they've asked to have this pulled, and hopefully we'll be on the annual town meeting of 2022. Should we make a recommendation? Yes. Should we make a recommendation to defer, nonetheless? No, because it's going to be pulled from the yeah, warrant. We're not even, it's not even going to be printed. printed. Yeah, it won't yeah. be printed. So now everything else would be an article less, but we're going to go by this numbering for tonight. Okay. Got it. Which should make it really interesting if people go back and listen to this. So, um, so Article 7, which is the town hearing the interim report from the TC Building Design Committee. I move to recommend approval of Article 7. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. And we have, now, we, now do we have this sum of money for Article 8? 23 million 570,000. 23 million 570,000. Okay, so this is the uh, the renovation, design, renovating, furnishing, and equipping TC Pasios building. So this is in the amount of this. If this passed here, it would require a uh, it would a debt exclusion ballot, and it is in the amount of twenty three million five hundred seventy thousand dollars. I move to recommend disapproval of Article Eight. Anybody? I'll oh, second to hear the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. So this is the renovation of the building, uh, and I think that based on, I think we can defer to town meeting because we don't have the number for this apples to apples. I think the expectation is that the number is going to be um, the same or lower, and so with that, uh, I don't think it's prudent to uh, renovate. A 69 year old building uh, I, I I'm in favor of building a new one my feeling is since we've 
agreed that eight and nine are tied together, and I'm not convinced we're going to have all the information we need for eight or nine, that I think we should defer to town meeting personally. I agree with Chairman Alonzo. Then I withdraw my motion, and uh, I move to defer to town meeting. I have second. A second for that. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. We have deferred unanimously. So Article 9, I would probably recommend the same thing personally. Well, I would like to discuss Article 9. Sure. Um, so there's, I'd like to recommend two changes to this article. So the first is to the dollar amount uh, to increase that from three, 250 to 350. And the second is to delete um, bid preparation for construction. So to explain that, um, what's What's happened in, in the intervening time is reaching out to the design architect to get a solid number here on uh, what this next phase of design will cost. Uh, initially, when we went through this process for the TCP renovation, uh, we were going off the numbers that were in the, I believe it was the TAP A, uh, and, and so the cost for the building was lower. And so the numbers were related to that cost. Um, we are looking at now that we know that this building is going to be 17 to 23 million and that range is what I believe it will likely come out as in the range of 17 to 23 million um, roughly the design development uh, cost or quote that we received uh, at a tent so let me step back they look at the full design project they come up with 10 percent and that's usually uh, how the architects like to um, plan it now, real world is that the number really comes in somewhere between 5 and 8%, 7, 8 is more normal. Uh, when we did this with the design company previously, that, that percentage was 8%. So if we assume that there's a 10% design, overall design fee, and that's for every stage of the project, and you break that down into sections, what's the schematic, what's the design development, that you end up at a cost of about 350 for the design development phase. So I'm moving to amend Article 9 to delete the, um, the number $250,000 and insert the number $350,000 and to delete the phrase uh, comma and bid preparation for construction. Can we, if I may, can we split this into two votes? Can sure. we do the two things individually? Sure. Because I personally have no problem with removing bid big preparation for construction um, and but having seen what the uh, the architects and the engineers have provided for the number I don't I haven't seen anything that they are providing that number of 350 I think that's being calculated outside of any bid that I've seen and I don't feel comfortable putting in a number there or certainly we could put in a number but I mean it seems to be artificial that we're just making up a number. Like we don't have a bid that actually says somebody actually from an engineering company said this is what this is going to cost because it seems like it's a lot larger from what we saw. Yeah, so the the design of de the design development number that we did get was three hundred and forty eight thousand um, dollars. There there's a question about the there's a question about the schematic. Um, part of the process you know and i think that there's there needs to be more engagement there but again there that's a 10 percent assumption and and i think that the we're going with eight eight percent so i i will make the motion then to uh for article nine to amend article nine to delete um to delete comma and bid preparation for construction i have a second second Mr. Marino. All right, can we discuss it more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you look like you wanted to say something, so. Well, why don't you just change 250 to an amount of money? Can you do that? No. No. Okay. No, anything that, anything that involves money on town meeting floor has to have a, an amount. All right, second question. All right? No. You no, hold on, hold on. No, it can be a sum of money. The article can be worded a sum of money. Wow. Okay. The, so this the is motion needs the dollar amount. Right. Okay. But yeah. okay. Yeah. But that's my but point. My point is when when the when the when the article is moved, we need a dollar amount. Can you? And if we're printing something that says a dollar amount, a sum of money that's not in the warrant, 
I, again, psychologically, it gets people prepared. Like, what, you don't even, like it's, you're printing this two weeks before <coughs> town meeting or three weeks before town meeting and you don't know what the, mon the amount is that So, is. you almost answered my second question then. Can that be amended on the floor? Yeah, sure. Well, it can be amended lower. Oh, not it higher. can't be amended higher. It be within the scope of the article, and to higher would be outside the scope. Okay, of the, right. Yeah. So, uh, with within the the state's procurement process, there's, you know, the five steps of how you build a building. Um, you know, design. Excuse me, schematic design, design development, uh, construction documents, uh, bidding, and then construction itself. So, you know, there, there is some discussion that needs to be had. Um, and, you know, we haven't, you know, we haven't procured bids for what this next phase would be, but we did submit a request to the architect for what the full cost would be, as well as a breakdown of each phase. And for the de design development phase, um, that portion was estimated at 348,000 using a 10% overall project number. So they're working, they seem to be working with this $17.4 million number, but they haven't officially given us a $17.4 million number. Uh, so I, what I'm asking is that we amend this to say 350, um, 350,000. Well, that's the second part. So when it comes to the bid preparation for construction, I, I think it's, um, the, there's got to be overlap between every phase because of the questions that the residents need to know. So during the, during the design development, there's going to be some construction document type work done there, not, a, not construction document fully work, but you have to answer some questions. You know, so there is a little bit of overlap and that was also something that I think they were, they were projecting. So that's why I'm saying let's remove this bid preparation for construction phraseology because I think it's unlikely um, that I think it sends a message that is a little different than I think the one that we should that that I that we should send. Yeah, I think the bid construction documents severely jacks up the price because it's a lot more involved, not only in time frame but also work. Uh, so I agree that we should remove that. Um, so let's we can. That's the first one motion on here. I don't know if anybody else wants to comment on just removing that part. You know, personally, I think if we're just looking for them to do the design development phase, I think we should state that, that develop, you know, the, uh, engage them to uh, complete the design development uh, stage of, of engineering documents. Um, because final design services, that's, that's not included. That, to me, that's final design services is, you know, you're, you're getting into construction documents. So, what was the wording that we use on the one that this, the TCP is, this, this was, was it? This was including it. Including construction documents? Except for the and bid preparation for construction. That was the add one. Okay. But it, everything else was what we, what we had. Okay. So this is the verbiage used for design development that we use for de design development. I'm not in this field and I know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I completely agree with take out bid preparation for construction, you know. Um, we're going to have a budget number in there um, that I think is reasonable that, that uh, Mr. Jeffries has stated for design development documents. It does seem reasonable. That's probably, you know, somewhere around 2,000 or, or 2,500 hours of, of effort on, on the part of the design firm, um, which is, is, seems reasonable. Okay. So on, so Mr. Jeffries made a motion. I didn't hear a second. There was a second. There was yeah, a second. Oh, you did second that. Okay. So then any other questions about removing the end? In preparation for construction. Thank you. I didn't have it in front of me. Yep. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So that is removed. I move to amend Article 9 to delete 250000 and insert 350000 in its place. Do I have a second? I'm going to second that for discussion. So my question is, uh, my fourth question is, so now that, I mean, if you put it, so you said if it's, you can amend them, 
that figure down on the floor right. if you have to. Yep. Yes. So if it's at 350 and it's, dis it's determined at that time that you don't need $350,000, you can amend it down, right? Yes. Right. Wouldn't that be prudent to do that? Or? Yeah. The only question is that the, the only question is if you go, and that's the other case, if you go and you find out through the discussions that I'm assuming will continue and it's higher, you can't make it higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be able to make it higher, and therefore we wouldn't have enough money potentially to support an actual bid or an actual refined quote that we got. That's what you run the risk of. Or, yeah, or the wording and the motion could be amended to specify that maybe it's not to exceed. Not, no, meaning um, that it'll take you to a portion of design development or yeah. so forth or yeah that gets tricky yeah. sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so you know, the, the, the alternate argument is all the town manager says you can put a sum of money and then put it in when we have it but that's going to make people raise an eyebrows like what what do you mean a sum of money like I don't even know what the money how can I prepare for town meeting if I don't even know what the money number is mm -hmm. so no I, I've I've just as some background I've I've run you know we, we this is information as you know with the building stuff it's everything is still in motion you were still in motion with a lot of this so these numbers came in early I, I actually ran down and met with mr. Roy you know I think you know when you get a quote back from anyone you always have questions about you know do they look at what you were looking for is this really you know the real number because you know and then you try to work you try to work with it I think Greg and I both had the perspective that the 350 for design development was a was was more common with what based on the percentages and mr roy is here <laughs> <laughs> and based on the uh percentages that were that they're using which are a little higher that it is within the realm of normal but on the very high end of it so i i think that our ex expectation is that this number is not going to land at 350 uh, but that you know that would be the the ceiling and you know so that's why i think if in, given that this is looking given that this money will be used to help get us to the spring in which we can have a plan to bring before the town to move forward on another project um you know i, want, I my intent is to be sure that we're properly funding it so to be clear the 350 amount is based on the estimates that have been shared with you from the design firm and they're basing their numbers on their the total fees for design documents uh, from conception through construction documents is roughly 10 percent of the correct that, that's what that number's but i'm fine with that yep. and this is a fraction of that 10. correct yeah I have, yep i have a question on this um actually he did, did, did greg see what was going on on tv he's throwing <laughs> his coat saying, hey, i gotta get down there uh this is so um you're saying that you they seem to be working with the 17 million dollar figure but that the project might be between 17 and 23 million so that means this 10 percent is could be bigger than 1.7 million and then the breakdown could be for this phase of it could be more than 350. correct so then 350 might not be enough uh, that's that's correct in theory uh, I think that we're we also 10% is not a common number um, you know really the number is usually five to eight percent so we're going with a higher number saying if this was the worst case scenario and you know what are we looking at and then planning kind of for that and right now they're working we haven't officially been given a number back they're still working through that but it seems that their number right now is 17.43 million. Right. Okay. So, but what? Do, what's just walk me through this because I mean, you yep. know, I'm new here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. What happens if this number turns out to be insufficient? I mean, we just go back for more money. <laughs> no, no. I, I think that what you do is you you get when you you get as you get as far as you can get with it. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, you know, they're, they're, 
the number that we have of 348 looking at a 10 percent looking at the certain building value you know that's how we land here now you know if this is more common you know like i said if we think of what we've already done we've used an eight percent figure um again five to eight is is in the more common range i think that what you do is you go out with an rfp and and you say what you're you know you can wear that rfp rv you want to uh but it can include kind of a this is what we're going to pay the most and this is what we're looking to get accomplished for that amount um, that's one approach another approach is not to put in that dollar amount and see what these bids come back as and then to negotiate and say you know we want you know let's take this off so we can meet our magic number okay appreciate the explanation. so the the numbers i was i was that i saw regarding the schematic design and the design documents totaled in the amount of like six hundred and thirty thousand dollars correct seven i think that what they came back with was something along the lines of like seven hundred thousand dollars and 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 that would be for the um again sometimes when you go through this process you have to get questions and and there's a question of you know mr um dwyer just noted about thousands of hours of man hours of how you're getting here I think that you know Greg and I had a conversation about what's left in the schematic design phase. I think both of us kind of have this perception that you know we're, we're probably looking at maybe 10 to 15 more hours. So we really are at a loss for where they're why this is being estimated at thousands of more hours when that is essentially what we've already done. Um, that when when you think about the phase we went through with the renovation project. You know, we have that schematic design, and if we recall that presentation a year and a half ago, it's a really kind of a basic layout of this is what you can do, and it's the design development that we've been going through over the last, you know, really that in in the spring, but that was about an, a year plus long process in which they did a lot of that research to uh, meet with different. You're, it's a data gathering phase, so you're meeting with the different people you're really understanding the space needs you're really drilling down exactly what those needs are during that design development phase and then coordinating that based off your schematic design into a workable plan so you know i think that there is a there's a question um on that but of of what it is that they're servicing but again these things are fluid i'll be the you know i, I i'm going to I'm going to borrow Mr. Passios' words here and say that, you know, I care about this passing, but I care about this also being, I care about the information being accurate and correct when we get to be able to vote on this. And if we don't, you know, have some more information, you know, we're about a month out. So we do have some time here to narrow this down and work on it. But if we don't have uh, the good vision and we don't have a, a clear expectation of what these costs will actually be um then then we we vote to not we vote to pass over the article i mean you know that's but if we my concern is that if we don't at this point continue to move forward with this so and give us that other two weeks to gather more information then we we find ourselves at a loss would you like to speak to this i assume you didn't run up here just to look at us <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> impressed of your arrival at 10 o'clock, but, but one question before you, before you comment on this, what I'd like to know is from a lay person's point of view, can you explain the difference between schematic design and design documents and what those two phases of the four phases, then of course it's construction documents and construction administration. administration. Mm -hmm. So just talked about what the schematic design, what is schematic design? Yeah. For everybody listening, I'm a civil engineer, not an architect, but I'll do the best I can with okay. that question. Um, and that's actually what I wanted to talk to. That's what I want to say. Um, schematic design is a step that you take to get, but that you, you need to land on before you get to design development phase. So schematic design is basically doing the work that is required to figure out what your program's going to be to figure out what's going to be in the building, how much space we need to assign to all the different users, um, meeting with all the different stakeholders, meeting with the town manager, meeting with the planning office, meeting with the conservation office, meeting with everybody, the Lions Club, the school department, figuring out what you need 
and getting to a schematic design, which is basically not a design that's um, coordinated across all the different trades, HVAC, structural. None of that's been done yet. You're just getting to an architectural plan of this is basically what we want the building mm -hmm. to look like. Okay, you know, this is the square footages we want. Um, and there's a lot of work that goes into that. <clears throat> Once you agree on a schematic design, and our committee did a lot of work to get to schematic design, you know, a year and a half ago. Um, <clears throat> Once you get to the schematic design, then you employ the services of uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing consultants to figure out what the uh, specifics of the building systems are going to be. Uh, you employ structural engineers. You start reaching out to your civil engineers to figure out what the external scope of work is going to be. And you advance the schematic design drawings to design development phase, which gives you sort of an outline specification of what the um, systems of the building is going to look like, which gets you to the point where you can get a reasonable cost estimate uh, for this, uh, a reasonable cost estimate that you'd be willing to go to town meeting for to get construction funding, right? So that's, that's sort of the difference between schematic design and design development. Um, so what I wanted to say, <laughs> And I appreciate the time. I had a couple of public hearings already at other town meetings, so I'm tired, and I apologize if I'm delirious. But um, I think what Michael Ray is suggesting here is that uh, is is correct. We have we just spent two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars to go from zero, not quite zero, because we had some other studies with TAP A and things, but to go from zero all the way through schematic design, all the way through to design development on the renovation of TCP. And that process included meetings with all the stakeholders. We don't need to do that again. It included existing condition surveys of the existing building. We don't need to do that again. That's all done. And we're, you know, if, if we decide that we want to do a new building, we wouldn't need existing condition survey of the building anyway because we'd be demolishing it. Uh, it includes a site sur like land surveying work that's already been done. Um, so, I, you know, in talking, I did meet with Michael Ray this morning, and I, in talking with him, we both agreed that all of that work is done. There's probably some, you know, massaging that needs to happen uh, with a new with a new building, but. <clears throat> to go back, I think it seems to me that the assumption was made that we'd be sort of starting over from zero, and I just don't think that that's the case. I don't think that's a valid assumption in this case because we have a lot of data. A lot of time was put in. Um, it's all presented in a four to 500-page <laughs> document <laughs> that they gave us as part of the 265,000 that they gave us, and a lot of that is usable. Uh, we're using it as an assumption for this um, for this scope of work that we're doing that we've been in, embarking on in the last couple months. And it can certainly be used as a starting point uh, for design development uh, wow. as, as, as we advance those drawings. So I just, I just wanted to give that. Yeah, so I presume that that, was, that that would be true. There would be a lot of information, obviously, that you could bring forward. My question would be <clears throat> to anybody who was involved in this, the, per, the, 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 the company that we've asked to provide the numbers that they provided, were they aware that we have all this? I mean, so where did they Boy. get their numbers for? Like, how could the numbers be yeah. three hundred thousand dollars off? Well, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that it's three hundred and something thousand dollars off. I, 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 I think that when you go through this process, that you ask the question of if you, you know, what would this, what will your cost be over the life of this project in each individual phase? And we got an answer to that. Um, that, and I, I think that where we are at is that we don't need that schematic. We've already done it, and there may be maybe ten or fifteen hours of components there that will transfer over into this, but nothing, not substantially anything more than that. N nothing to the magnitude of the value of someone's house. We we just did the entire process that we're talking about that they presented in that in the in the correspondence that you reviewed. We did it for two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. That's right. the, the fact of the matter. We, you know, so I just, I just think that there's some assumptions being made there that are, uh, that are not 
valid. Um, you know, I just, you know, they may have had a different view of what the the full value of the project was or something, but you know, um, it can be done. It was done, in my view, very well. Oh, we got a very good document, um, and it can be used in the future. No, so I, I don't I think, disagree uh, with anything. No, 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 I, and I'm, I'm not trying to be. I'm, I'm not trying to I, be defensive. I'm just oh, my, to my point is that I just. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find out where the disconnect is that we <laughs> said to somebody. I, if you uh, told somebody, hey, given all the work that I've done, and you put this yeah. virtual 500-page document, and you say, okay, now we're looking at new construction. How much is it going to cost? And they give you a cost that's $636,000 to do I, schematic I design yeah. and design development. And you guys are saying, well, we don't need that. We need 350. That We're not quibbling about quarters, right? We're quibbling about like 200,000, 350,000. So, so one question I have. Uh -huh. is we're talking about a new building here, and I know you've done space studies and evaluated the space we need, but one of the things that's done in schematic design is building layout. Right. We don't have a layout yet. You, you, well, you do. You just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it, that's, what, that's what this $54,000 has done. Uh, okay. It, it sort of uh, massaged the schematic. It might, it, this is just Greg Roy's words, okay? Right, right. It's taken the schematic design that we prepared for the renovation of TCP and it's put it into it, it's given it legs on what it could look like in a new building. Okay. And it's uh, it's remarkable. <laughs> I mean, it, it uh, you know the the way they they fit things together. I mean, it it when we're ready to share it, I think you'll all agree it's a it's a pretty nice okay. flowing building. But that's we're going to be at that that stage. Uh, short, we're at that stage. It's just a matter of getting the plan and ready to share it with people. Right. Um, so we're going to so, have that. So my next question, is, is that going to be a big thrust of the presentation that we, we see at Special Town Meeting? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And no, in November the 2nd, when I would like to present for this or, or show you the go over the presentation for this article uh, to this board, I mm -hmm. will include that as an element of that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. And yeah. we're coordinating together. I haven't mentioned this because I haven't done a committee report yet, but I'm coordinating the presentation I'm working on with the TCP Design right. Committee, knowing we're, that they're going to go sequentially. We're, we're currently, we meet tomorrow night, and we're currently mm -hmm. working on that presentation, uh, knowing that Mr. Jeffries needs it before his presentation <laughs> to your committee. So, um, and that, you know, that plan's ready. Um, we, we've, um, we've we've approved it um the the tcp committee approved it so that they could get going on their cost estimating mm -hmm. um we approved it conditional upon a couple of minor tweaks mm -hmm. so they're you know they're tweaking a few things and we're and then we're ready to sort of present that but um it's uh, that's going to be uh we're going to have that floor plan um that Good. Uh, gives us the, that comparison so i uh <laughs> I completely understand where you're coming from. I was kind of given it. I kind of gave it a little head scratcher when I met with uh, Michael Ray this morning as well. Okay. Uh, I I'm not. I mean, I'm in the industry, and I don't. I don't really. <clears throat> I'm not seeing the. I'm not seeing it. Um, I just don't. I don't understand the disconnect. It does, just doesn't. The numbers don't add up. Um, so, um, I think that the numbers that you're talking about with the 350 are, are, are reasonable um, and um, you know I don't want to get too uh, outside my <clears throat> my purview but I just wanted to give you a little explanation of um, that whole relationship between where we've been schematically the schematic the schematic designs done as far as we're concerned for all intents and purposes and we don't need to go back and restart the restart that so I'm no, I'm not. I'm not. It's ten. It's ten twenty-five. I'm not even going to go there. Okay. Uh, That's fine. I, just, I, appre I appreciate you coming in, Greg, and, sure. and uh, okay. giving clarification. Okay. Thank you. And now I know what schematic design is. Drive carefully. It's very tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, was there a motion about this? Yes. And was, was there a yeah? yeah Mr. Was. Marino seconded it. Okay. Any further discussion about this? So all in favor of the motion to change that replace 250 and replace it with 350, please say aye. 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 Opposed, none. So now the article itself. Because we deferred on Article 8, uh, 
I'm, I'm still inclined to say we recommend approval of Article 9, but I don't think it makes a lot of sense if we defer Article 8 for us to re make a recommendation on Article 9. What are your, anyone else's thoughts? I completely agree with that. These are, have been, in my mind, a couplet the entire time, and, and they have to be treated the same, the same way. So I, I think it should be deferred as well. Uh, I'm taking you all for your word on the information that's forthcoming, uh, but because I haven't seen it yet, I agree with the firm. All right, I move to defer it on that. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. Article 10, accept, uh, acquiring an easement on Lemonster Shirley Road. This is for the Lunenburg Central Project. Um, this is getting uh, by eminent gift purchase or eminent domain uh, for future maintenance of and repairs to the roadway utility maintenance um, for that project. Move to recommend approval. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes unanimously. Uh, Authorizing the select board to acquire by gift purchase eminent domain or otherwise temporary permanent and permanent utility easements along f certain Flat Hill Road parcels so we can uh, construct the, this is for the culvert? Yes. Yeah, so this is for the culvert project that is uh, under design and plan right now. I move to recommend approval of Article 11. Sure. Second. Nope. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Article 12 is uh, amending the sewer service map area to include Marshall Park. I move to recommend approval of Article 12. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. Uh, voting to transfer the care, custody, and control of a certain parcel known as 970 Rear New West Townsend Road from the Select Board to the Conservation Commission. Again, this was, uh, this should have been done at another meeting, but it was done. It had uh, the wrong parcel. Had the wrong parcel identified. So basically, <clears throat> it's more of a housekeeping. I recommend approval of Article 13. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, Ex amending Chapter 70 of the town's bylaws with the new salary admin plan, with the new uh, positions listed there. I move to recommend approval of Article 14. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes unanimously. 15, the new uh, modification uh, to the demo delay bylaw as submitted by the Historical Commission. Mr. Chair, I have a discussion point on this one. Yes. Uh, we had agreed, and I think that this was probably inadvertent, but um, when looking at uh, no, D1, uh, so we have bona fide reasonable attempts have been made to sell, preserve, move, rehabilitate, or restore. And then, or, or relocate, you mean? Yes, okay. uh, right. A yep. And then we go down, evidence shall include, and then we've got A, B, C, and D. And, and that doesn't make, we agreed last time that that does not make any sense. Um, because the, the, the one up top, top is disjunctive with the or, and then this is conjunctive. Some of these wouldn't apply. If you only, in other words, if you satisfied the conditions, when Mr. McGrath was, uh, was here, he said you wouldn't have to do everything that's listed in the preamble of number one. You could just do one or, or two of those things. But, so then you wouldn't need to do all four of these things. Uh, uh, see what I'm saying? Some of them would be inapplicable. Correct. That was the comment. That I think I may have asked that question, and, or, or you did. And so it's clear that the and at the end of C should be an or, not an and. Or, or none, of them have, none, of, none of them have anything except for the C. So A and B don't have anything either. Well, that's okay, because you're doing A, B, C, or D. Yeah. And do we have the power to actually amend this? If we can. no, well, I well, 
yeah, you can argue that we should, but it's submitted by another body, so right. we should probably you should probably take this discussion point and write it out and present it at town. We're not gonna we're not gonna correct it tonight because it's okay. not our article. Could you do something as simple as saying evidence shall include one or more of the following? Yeah, or the or or the applicable uh, right actions from mm -hmm. among the following, or, right. or, or or you know, yeah, okay, you know. So you can defer it and then just amend it at town well, meeting. Uh, yeah, we would just amend the wording at town meeting. So to, let's defer. To, to that to that point, I mean, I, I thought that you know certain boards like the planning board, we don't have a say of whether or not they get on the warrant but we do have a say when it comes to the uh historical commission so are we are, i mean are we sure we can't amend this it's not about we can't I, I think we can i'm less likely i'm less inclined to do it because i'd like their input on this and you know so uh, doesn't d apply to all of those previous things under number one though like if you it's asking for the name, address, contact information of the party or parties that have been located and who have agreed to preserve, rehabilitate, restore, or relocate the building or structure. Right, that is true. It is just asking for the name and address of the contact information of the person who's agreed to do one of those things. Was that me? Yeah. Sorry, that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your, your bedtime reminder? That, that was one of the, I have to, I wish I'm going to get this on the recording. Is that me? That's really annoying. I'm gonna, absolutely going to record that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think that that's partially true, but not because I'm the only thing that, that the list in D is missing is sell. Sell. And so it, it, because it doesn't say sell, it, it, you know, I, I think. May, may, how about this first suggestion? I think that there's something. There is definitely still something problematic about the way this is worded, and I, I like the idea of deferring it to town meeting and then raising the issue there. Yeah, and so. I certainly would. In, I would encourage you to contact the historical commission and um, with your question yeah. directly and say that part. I, I thought we, you know, I want to get clarification so you can work with them on the wording so that everybody. I mean, I'm. We're all in agreement, and I think we're just down to okay the mechanics of the grammar and the, and the the conjunction to be used. So yes, yeah. So if you want to do that, and then we could just sure. this is not going to throw off anybody at town meeting to no, make no, a no, wording no. change that yeah, just yeah. I don't. I'm not, I'm uncomfortable with to address Mr. Jeffrey's uh, idea though. I'm uncomfortable with the idea of our amending it well, and putting it there. They submitted it and they submitted it in a particular form. Now, if we go back to last week's meeting in our drive and we look at what is listed in here as Article H, the wording here is different. And the wording here is what we approved. So I'm in favor of the wording from our previous meeting being inserted into the article because that's what we discussed. Um, and it doesn't have this and or there. It has a period. But we asked them to go back and yes. change it. We asked them to, to go back and change and make sure, are you saying and here or, or like where is it doing? There was a whole discussion point Got about it. that. So this, is what their, was, this was their attempt, I'm assuming, at remedying and addressing that issue, although it still has some ambiguousness. Yes, okay. Ambiguity, Ambiguity. I think is the word, yes. Right. Ambigosity. I move we defer uh, Article f uh, 15 until town meeting. Second. Do I have any? Uh, well, I'm, I said no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 16. Well, now we get to all of the, we can do them individually. These are all the ones that Mr. Bernie came in from the planning board, which most of them are housekeeping. So 16 takes out the reference to retail commercial district and substitutes village center district. Are you willing to take these in, in yeah, bulk? Yeah, we can bulk them, sure. All right. Um, 16, 17, 18. And 19. And 19. Yep. I move to recommend an approval for articles 16, 17, 18, and 19 as submitted by the planning board. Second. Uh, this one, because there's four, I will say any further discussion. Um. All the all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. That passes unanimously. So those are all our recommendations. All right. Marathon here. Yes. So we're gonna <laughs> uh, we're gonna in the in the essence of time. Does anybody? Do we have warrants? No. No. 
And does anybody have the? I, we can go over committee reports. Well, we can do the minutes. Anybody have minutes? These are simple. Those. Uh, uh, yeah, I actually would ask that we defer the minutes to next week. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like to, I didn't review them. Okay, no, that's fine. All right, so we'll defer those to next week. All right. Warrants, none. Action items? I'll follow it with the town manager. Committee reports. Mr. Marino, any none. committee reports? Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I attended a MJTC meeting uh, on uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, the next MJTC meeting is on uh, November 10th. Um, Discussion at that meeting. Uh, bear with me here just a minute. There was a presentation on the Safe Routes to School program. Um, there was also a presentation on complete streets for the town of Sterling. Um, those were the, the major highlights that Good. were discussed. Thank you. Mr. Franco. I have none. I, Mr. Jeffrey. I forgot what we were doing for a second. <laughs> 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 I, have no I, want, I, want you to I want I want you to follow Mr. Roy home. Well, well, you <laughs> yeah, can make sure yeah. you get home okay. <laughs> yes, I might have Darlene come pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jeffries, uh, TCP Design Committee met last Wednesday. They're meeting again this Wednesday. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier uh, the kind of the key points there. Uh, Mr. Roy did it at, at least. So um, we're working on a presentation for for annual town meeting. Uh, the special. Special, special, thank you, special town meeting. Uh, the intention is is that uh, we will go before the um, finance committee coming up here on the 4th of November to represent that article uh, in front of them. Okay. And my committee report. So the finance committee had their public hearing for the uh, for all the warrant articles you saw in, in our list tonight, all their recommendations. Uh, no surprise that the same two that took up our line share of our time tonight took up their line share of their time. And they will be having, because the numbers aren't ready, they will be having a special public hearing for just those articles and anything else they didn't have information for. I think there was one or two budget articles that town manager did not have artic uh, numbers for that Actually, she Actually, one to. was the one that was withdrawn. Oh, okay. Um, so it will just be the TCP. So it's, just the, so it's the TCP Design Committee public hearing. <laughs> All right. Well, since I'm representing them and us, I think, for both, that's going to be an interesting thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then tonight we had our <clears throat> meeting of the Capital Planning Committee, uh, the first meeting post the submission of all the requests from the departments. We reviewed all the new ones with the town manager and we set up an agenda that we will be meeting every Tuesday with the exception of special town meeting night and probably during the holidays we'll play those because our our goal or by necessity actually by charter is that we have to get a final list to the town manager by the middle of January or early to middle of January at the latest. So we have working backwards and we'll start meeting with departments starting next Tuesday. And we'll be meeting at 5.30 for the next Tuesdays. All right, uh, upcoming meeting. We have no selectman meeting next week. So the next meeting is November 2nd. We will have more information about these landscape architect firms. And we will hopefully make a decision on them then. And then uh, November 9th. And then, of course, the 16th is a special town meeting. Remember, so far, it's still... It's still planned for next Thursday, the meeting with the Finance Committee regarding Chapter 70 at the, at the uh, high school, middle school auditorium. Although the, now that the legislators can't make it, they may make some adjustment. We don't know to that meeting. I haven't heard any okay. update so, on that. But anyway, it's still up for that. Any public comment from the public? Yes, Mr. Roy. While I'm here, TCP is meeting tomorrow, the 20th, the 27th, and the 3rd at 5.30, and they will be via Zoom. So any members of the public are welcome, and we really would love to have public input. So please join uh, to uh, get informed or ask questions as you, uh, as you have. So thanks. Thank Appreciate you very much. Thank you. And for those who don't know, those Zoom agendas are posted on the town website. Any public comment from the board? No. Problem. Good. And adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, entertain a moment to adjourn.
A motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank God. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We will see you in two weeks. And until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Good night. Good night. Two to one. Bottom of six.